Hey guys, how's it going? It's Brendan here from Hyped on Crypto. I hope all of you guys are having a good morning, evening, wherever you guys are from. Welcome to the Hyped on Crypto live stream today. Of course, we got a lot of technical analysis to go over. We got some fundamental stuff. We're going to be talking about everything that's happening within the crypto sphere and all the news that we got going around because there's a lot of stuff uh, that's getting mentioned about cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology becoming more mainstream. And so we got a lot of fun stuff to dive into today. So I hope you guys do enjoy. We're going to get this kicked off here, but let's go ahead and get ready. All right, what's going on, everybody? Alexander, what's up? Electric Bird, Crypto D. Mission Controls in here. Monica, how's it going? Bitcoin Asset, DJ. DJ Meet Popsicle. Unique name. Lando, what's up? I'm back, back from vacation. I mean, look what happened while I was gone there, right? Did we not talk about this last time I was in here? Sarthak, what's going on? I like all the diversity that we got going on in here. Let's go up. All right, so last time, let's go ahead and um, first things first. Like one, we got a lot of news to cover, right? But two, we have some TA stuff to cover because that, you know, as much as people love the news, right? At the end of the day, people want to see some price movement. So let's zoom out a little bit here and talk about this. And so I got my retracement levels in here from our last run. Um, you know, of course, we're seeing the 618 being used as a pretty hard line of both resistance and, and not actually support either. So that was a little bit unique, you know, poking our, you know, depending on what you want to call that, you know, whether it's a head fake or a poke, um, I call it prairie dogging with our candlesticks, um, but it's not getting used as support at all. So we poked through on, you know, we poked through on that, but not seeing too much else. Is 60 FPS good? I hope so. <laughs> But let's talk about this, right? So if you guys remember at all, right? If you guys have been following me on the live streams, if you guys have been following my Twitter, if you guys have been in the Hyped on Crypto Discord at all, you guys would know that I have been talking um, a lot, especially on the live streams, about this ascending triangle that we had um, so, so well built, right? We built this up. Um, it was pretty well respected. We had a ton of touch points on the top. We had four touch points on the bottom. Um, as soon as I saw this, I placed a buy order. Um, it was enough for me to you know, look at you know we saw the rsi the mac triple di uh, bearish di excuse me triple bullish divergence on the macd we had uh, bullish divergence on the rsi um you know you could call that you know quadruple bullish divergence on the rsi i would probably call it more of triple um counting each run as its own individual but you know one two three you have your triple bullish divergence on your eye triple bullish divergence on your macd along with uh an ascending triangle working on btc so it was setting itself up really great so i you know you know if you guys are part of the patreon as well keaton placed a patreon trade setup uh i believe it was at six thousand two hundred and like $96 or something like that. So down, right down in here, right down in this area, which is where I place my buy order um, right below the 50 day EMA. Um, so that was part of a Patreon trade um, as well as a bunch of others. So congrats to anybody who participated in um, any of the price action that we've had so far. Um, but this is what we've been talking about, right? A lot of good indicators um, just really showing us that this was such a safe area to buy. I mean, you had support, you had an ascending triangle, you had bullish divergence on um, so many of your oscillators and indicators. And sure enough, you know, we had a single candle break through both of our MAs, or, or excuse me, our EMAs, which, uh, which was very, very good to see. And then, you know, of course, we see our candlesticks holding on top of those right at the 786. Um, you know, and following that, we had our, you know, our bullish run that shot up, uh, you know, a fairly significant in, uh, amount. So this was really great to see. Of course, we're having a little bit of pullback right now, but even this pullback, I mean, again, if you guys are in the Patreon, I went into um, a Patreon and I let people know that I previously, and that I've sold my position. Um, I had taken my profits um, almost at the top here uh, at around 74, um, $7,421 is, I believe, where I took my profit. So right up at about this level, I saw the bearish divergence coming in. I saw the RSI beginning to hook. Again, something to indicate here is that our RSI, guys, this is incredible, by the way. Our RSI was the highest it has ever been since June of 2016. That is incredible. It is the heart. It, we've had the highest RSI in this bull run that we've had in the last two years. It beat the great FOMO. It beat everything that happened during January and December. 
it literally was the highest it's been in two years on the RSI. Incredible price action, you know, for anybody who's in here. I mean, just huge green candles. Um, and the amount of buying pressure and, and volume that we had was fairly good as well. You know, we broke out with good volume, and that's exactly what we needed. However, this is not a market reversal yet. Why? Because we've talked about this giant line that we've had up here. This this is our bull market line, as I like to call it, right? This is our line of resistance that keeps us within a bull market. So as, for, for as long as we are under this line, we are going to continue in staying in a bear market. So we haven't even touched this line yet and we've already started to see pullback so you know as great as this run was in perspective the measured move would you know the measured move of this ascending triangle did put us even higher than this and that's why it's important to not just set your sell orders up but to also be watching your indicators and, and your price action of what's happening over here to see if you know you might not have enough momentum to break towards your um towards your sell order or your measured move Hopefully that makes sense. Let me pull up one thing over here real fast. Just to make sure I am not missing out on anything. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. You know, again, uh, so many things uh, to talk about here. So many things to talk about. I'm Audi. No crown ski. Yeah, and so you can't be too greedy here. You really can't, right? You've made good money. I, I mean, if you guys are part of the page, if you guys did the Patreon setup, um oh okay see electric bird it's good having you dude i was watching crown stream earlier dude he was killing it his uh stream the other day was pretty funny dude he was talking about his hatred of birds and uh something to do with wanting to take a tennis racket with him <laughs> that's all i'll say but what were we saying what were we saying Oh yeah, we are talking about our sell orders. Again, it's important to not just place sell orders, to look at your bullish and bearish divergence um, and keep around. And you know, if you guys were a part of the Patreon trade, you guys would be, you know, Bitcoin was up over $1,000 from keep stacking the Bitcoins. Of course, Electric Bird, if you guys were part of that, um, you know, again, we were up the or the Patreon setup and my setup personally that I had, that I had for myself was up um, about $1,100 when I went from buy to sell on Bitcoin. So nice. Again, we're looking for a little bit of pullback. Nothing too scary. I mean, if we look at this again, the highest RSI that we've had in over in over two years, which is incredible about um, probably about 25 months, actually. So again, we're going to see a little bit of a pullback here. It doesn't mean we're crashing. You know, it's not saying that we're going to crash yet, but the RSI was extremely over overbought. So we're going to have a little bit of uh, selling pressure come in here. See Electric Bird, you have a great night, dude. And then another w good way of how we looked at how this was a, a great indicator of, bull of bearish divergences, excuse me, is we had we saw up here we peaked on our MACD. We started seeing lower levels of positive momentum uh, coming in on our MACD, and you know of course this means that bearish stuff is incoming because the buyers are becoming less prevalent, less strong, and. Uh, sellers are coming into the market so you had bears coming in and then of course you want to look um, up here you know knowing that you're starting the hook on your MACD um, and as soon as you see that hook starting to come in um, along with lower levels of positive momentum um, it's a pretty good indicator that you had time to sell I got a little bit nervous earlier because um, after I'd sold we went down I believe it was like a hundred or two hundred dollars and then we shot back up at like four or like another three four hundred dollars um, went back up to almost it was almost like uh, 96 yeah so it was 7600 you know we went back up to that and i got a little bit nervous not too much um again didn't decide to re-enter you don't want to fomo um i knew what the indicators were saying um and i just stuck to the ta and um this is where we're ending up so again nothing too bad again you're probably going to see a little bit of pullback from selling just because you've gone up so much um, I mean, the price action on BTC in the last couple of days have been incredible. You know, if we check back here, we were at, you know, 6,100, 6,200 area just a couple of days ago. So <laughs> you can't be too mad, right? Um, so here we are. We're seeing a little bit of pullback. Um, areas of retracement. Probably you're going to see a lot of support down here uh, along the top of this ascending triangle. That's where my prime, you know, I might actually even place a buy order in there. Um, talking about how or i'm yeah i'll probably place a buy order talking or somewhere around this line of uh which was resistance which is now going to be used as support excuse me but now that we've covered our favorite bitcoin we can go in some of this crypto news because 
Man, has there been so much. So something I want to talk about is that I, I, I'll probably have to find this cryptocurrency uh, used on exams. Something like that. So this is what I was looking at uh, recently. Oh, Lando's already beat me to it. Anybody have uh, any news that they want to hear about? Yeah, what's going on with New Guinea today? Dude, let's find out. I guess we'll do that before we uh, talk anything about what's happening with like the school systems using cryptocurrency. Um, both good stuff. New Guinea. Dude, New Guinea is an awesome country. New. How do you spell that? New Guinea. Let's type it in cryptocurrency. Oh, what's happening over here? You have the Central Bank of Papua New Guinea adopts blockchain technology. Wow, that is big. That's actually really big. So if you live in New Guinea, dude, that's awesome for you because you're going to have a lot more accessibility to cryptocurrencies, at least of what you know most countries have, right? That's incredible. Uh, at the conference... Bakani described the blockchain trials underway at the Bank of PNG and introduced PMG Digital Commerce and Cryptocurrency Association. Wow. I believe my music was pretty loud too. I should probably turn that down. Hmm. Sorry guys, I feel like my music was way too loud. Turn that down just a tad. Just a tad. Oh, wait, this is an old article. Boo. Alright. That's why we don't use that button. That's why we don't use the all filter. Doesn't we can hear you fine over the music? Alright, I just didn't want to make sure I wanted to make sure it wasn't too loud. So here it is, you know, I don't know why. It's at the front page of the Papa New Guinea News 2017. A little bit interesting. Um I mean, even though you know, even though that was about a year ago, that's still really good news coming out from um, Papua New Guinea. As you guys, if that is true and that did happen, then you guys definitely have more accessibility than we do in the states. So here's one from about a month or two ago, talking about how the blockchain firms are getting established. Again, you guys are looking like a really crypto-friendly country, from what I'm telling here. Here's a new article. Akon's futuristic city will be powered by Akon and by his own cryptocurrency. I don't know how this has anything to do with Papua New Guinea, but... Akon's crypto city, creativity. It's supposed to be a real-life Uconda. So I guess it's supposed to be located somewhere new. Oh yeah, so here it is. Um, in 2014, Akon teamed up with uh, Thoin Nyang and Samba Baithley on an ambitious project to provide electricity uh, to African countries through solar energy. Four years later, the group claimed to have operations in 14 countries, including Guinea, Singal, Mali, uh, Niger, uh, Benin, Syria, and uh, Leon. I'm really bad at pronouncing names. Um, when asked about the technical questions about the panel, he said, I come with the concepts and let the geeks figure it out. All right, interesting. So um, you guys are going to have access to that as well. That's going to be really cool. Really cool. I mean, nothing too groundbreaking, at least not as of recently. Again, the last major news that you guys had was probably in May but um, or, or even in July. So almost about a year ago, about... 11, 12, uh, 11 to 10 months ago was your guys' recent um, uh, landmark, at least coming from the new stuff. I wish I could go more in depth and talk about that, man, but any views on Binance backing, decentra um, backing decentralized bank in Malta? I know, I think that's good. I, I think it's going to be a good move for Binance to back, to move their whole base to Malta. Um, and back the banks there because what that does is it gives them a lot more i don't want to say like variety but it, it lets them do a lot more right if they're working with the bank you're not going to be able to transfer everything from 
banks to no banks and you know just get rid of banks get rid of loans and all that um, overnight you're just not going to because you know if you try to go start a business which is going to cost you a lot of money or if you want to go buy a house which is also going to cost a lot of money you're going to need to get some sort of a loan right i work for a loan bank right now so i have a pretty good understanding of how it works and these businesses are expensive very expensive to start um and it's you know again it's extremely expensive to buy your own house as well so for that reason you're not going to be able to just get rid of banks in their entirety along with all the fiat everything that's happening right now you're not going to be able to just get rid of them and switch yourselves directly over in like a year's time it's going to be a gradual process so the fact that blockchain um and cryptocurrency organizations exchanges whatever you want to call them are partnering with banks doesn't make it a bad thing um in fact it makes it a good one because what that it does it uh, is it allows their exchange the binance exchange to expand further because now they have easy access to money they have a backing by a bank so now that they also have funding they also have reduced taxes because they built their um because they're moving their headquarters to malta so it's gonna help really it's gonna be like a butterfly effect for the you know for the binance exchange because you know while they were a cattle a caterpillar they were becoming a little bit too crowded in their cocoon and they needed to expand they needed to break out they needed to spread their wings and fly and what they're doing is they're breaking out of the cocoon and they're spreading their wings and they're flying over to malta um it's going to be something that's good for binance for sure absolutely so <laughs> well, there's actually news from there. I just asked a random question. Hey, happy I can answer, dude. There was some stuff, right? Any views on Binance uh, backing? Okay, yeah, we just went through that one. Uh, what about hearings in America today? Um, What hearings? I actually haven't looked at the news today. I was looking at it a lot yesterday. Oh, here it is. Positive tone on <laughs> crime. So we have... <laughs> Oh man, I will say uh, Canada is getting a really, really good cryptocurrency exchange. Um, I was looking at it earlier. It's one that has USD and fiat pairs to every single cryptocurrency on their exchange and website, whatever you want to call it, um, which is how exchanges should be, because there's no reason as to why you can't have uh, a fiat pair to cryptocurrencies, right? There's no reason, like, it's just them being greedy, annoying, um... I cannot wait till Binance gets their fiat pairs. That's all I'm saying. Um, the U.S. Congress strikes a positive tone on cryptocurrency in the latest hearing. Good stuff. I mean, we already knew this from what they decided uh, with the whole G20 situation not too long ago. What are you guys saying? Hey, man, can you put uh, the BTC price on screen uh, like how Mitch used to have it? Absolutely. I think we can do that um, at Mission Control. Is that a possibility? That is more on the, we will most certainly do that. If we cannot do it right now, hopefully we'll have it up by the end of the stream, but if not by the end of the stream, um, 100%, we will do that by the next stream for sure, Patrick. So thank you for suggesting that, man. We will definitely have that. If not by the end of the stream, then for sure um, for the following stream. And we're going to go back into Bitcoin pretty soon, Patrick. Um, doing some TA about that, doing some TA on some altcoins as well. We're just going through a little bit of news because there is so much to cover in the live stream tonight and not enough time. Uh oh, DJ says he's Canadian. We got a Canadian spy, says Mr. Concepts. You work for a bank and you're doing this online. Can you say unemployment? <laughs> uh, what do you think about the 7350 support level? Well, we can take a look at it. 7350. Um 7350 7350 being used as support. Um I don't think that it would be used as support personally. Um there's not there's not enough to, for it to be used as support, right? There's not enough. Um it wouldn't be a nice it wouldn't be a far enough retracement either. I mean, here you have yeah, I mean, it would just be too much of a... It, it, there's not enough there for it to be a support level, unfortunately. Um, what you're going to see is your support levels. You're going to see at the top of this ascending triangle, what was resistance is now going to be used as support. So you're going to be holding on this line and uh, hopefully bouncing off of it. So I might place a buy order down here, maybe keep a kind of um, tight stop loss. But what you're going to do 
is you're gonna have your EMAs move up as well with this um, with this level of which was resistance is now getting gonna is now gonna be getting used as support. So you're gonna have your EMAs move up. You're gonna be bouncing off those uh, again on, off the top of this line as well. And then even if you fall below that, you're gonna have your seven eight six um, retracement level, which you could very easily bounce off of as well. So we could even put in another um, fib retracement from swing high to swing low, or for, excuse me, from swing high to swing low over here. So. Why blow my cover like that? Guys, we have found out DJ Popsicle, Meat Popsicle, he's a spy. He's a spy for the meat-eating Canadians. Not the vegetarians, not the vegans, the meat-eating Canadians, dude. It's a whole nother race. You got like French Canadians, you got like English Canadians, you got like foreign Canadians, you got your meat eating Canadian you got you got everything over there, right? You got your your variety. And now we know he's a spy for the meat Canadians. You never know what you might get. But um going back to, going back to the news that we had over here talking about the US Congress, um, we had a really good understanding of this already because of what we've talked previously about um, in a video and both on the live streams and on our videos that I had produced, talking about how the G20, um, the US of course being part of the G20, um, and their decision on cryptocurrency. I mean now again, Congress being different from the G20, but you have Congress essentially agreeing, um, you know, striking positive tones with cryptocurrency. Um, I mean, let's see if there's anything specific in here that we can read about. Uh, the hearing included uh, academics, engineers, entrepreneurs in the cryptocurrency industry. Oh, wow. So you have Fairfield, uh, Baldick, Cooper, Gorefine, Mr. Gary Gensler, and a couple other decent sized names. Yeah, I mean, this. a lot of this is just kind of like reiteration. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Um, I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to do a little bit of TA, and then we're going to go back in and talk about how cryptocurrencies are actually going to be started getting used in, in schools and in universities around uh, the country of the United States now. So this is going to be really cool. Um, but we're going to come back to that because we're going to go do a little bit of TA, keep ourselves diverse, keep you guys intrigued because people want to see price action. Am I right or am I right? Boom and boom. All right, no worries, Mission Control. Hey, Patrick. Um, unfortunately, we cannot get the BTC price um like zoomed in on the screen for this stream, but we will for sure have it next stream, man. So really sorry about that. But if you, again, you know, I can keep uh, telling you the updates of the price if you'd like, um, and we, we and we can work from there. So right now we're sitting at seven thousand three hundred eighteen dollars on the BTC to USD um price action on the Bitfinex exchange course we're using trading view as our charting method I'm going good so far <laughs> I've been able to eat again after the recent price spike has been good <laughs> yeah dude it really has I um I I made some decent gains on this front I will say that I, I only traded Bitcoin that was the weird thing is I was trading Cardano around over here and then I um I don't know necessarily if this is a good thing. A lot of people do this though. I put every, th I put all my cryptos into Bitcoin and then rode this entire green candle. So, and then of course I sold it almost the very, very top. But, um, so it wasn't bad. Of course, you know some of these altcoins got like 15, 20, 25 percent gains, but, uh, eh, some of them got like four percent gains, and then other ones got like 25 percent gains. So. <laughs> He's a vegan cat lover. Bitcoin wisdom, dude, coming in with some wisdom. Hashtag exposed. Exposed, drunk, rest in peace. Hi. Dude, you never know what's going on anymore, do we? Never know what's going on. So, um, if you, by the way, if you guys have any um, requests for what you guys want me to do a coin technical analysis of, if you guys want me to look at coin, uh, if, if you guys want me to talk about a certain news subject, be sure to let me know. I would be more than happy to help you guys out and uh, do anything along those lines. So again, you know, coin requests, um, anything news related that you guys want me to look into, be sure to just let me know. Just like Mr. FC Bayern Munich. Welcome back, dude. Great to have you. Can we look at new Neo to USDT? Absolutely, we can. Absolutely. Neo to Neo to USDT. Coming in hot, Roger. Boom, boom, boom. Neo's still pretty far down, dude. A thirty-six dollar Neo. That's incredible. 
So first things first, we're gonna draw this beautiful line of resistance that we have right here. I mean, look at that thing. Technically broken, technically. So technically it's broken right now. Um, so, mm, <laughs> break out with such low momentum. I mean, it couldn't even bre break its previous high. So now you have a problem over here if we're talking about it even further. We're gonna be talking about Hmm, this getting used as resistance. So now here we go. Can't even do that. This is gonna be our new line of resistance on Neo. So you're gonna have to break this. My guess is that you're gonna start seeing support along this 50 day EMA. Um, if you break below that, you're gonna have a little bit more support down here, probably around your 33, $34 range for Neo. But um, I mean, if you look at, I mean, again, Neo hasn't had that bad of a run, right? You went from, in this, in this recent run that we just had, for the past couple of days, um, let's see, what, what do you have? You've gone up from around $30 to $40, about a 10, that's about a 25% increase in NEO. I mean, if you're holding from a swing bottom to swing high, then you would have gained about 25%. So I, that's nothing, you know, nothing too bad here. I'd say that is about 25%, right? No, it's about 30, 33%, 33%, something like that. So not bad if you were to swing traded Neo here. Again, not being able to break your previous high, which is a little bit scary. Um, yeah, you can't even break the secondary high that you had. So we'll see here. Let's go ahead and try to see what we can be using as support, what we can kind of be hopefully finding something reassuring on, right? We're gonna draw a couple of lines here so it might get a little bit hectic. It's going to be a little bit hard here because of the uh, how fast this went up, right? To find some solid support, so you're going to have to be using candle body closings as your primary support. RSI, um, you know, you saw clear bearish divergence on your RSI. You should have known this. Um, one, two, three, triple bearish divergence on your RSI. Um, followed, you know, and what essentially all this is is saying it's not saying that it's since it's overbought, it has to get sold, right? That's not saying what it is. But when you see this, what you're seeing is lower levels of positive momentum. So you went so high up here, next time you went not quite as high, next time you went not quite as high again. And so this was your indicator of, um, all right, we're starting to see consistent lower levels of positive momentum and positive divergence coming into this coin, knowing that you're probably going to get some feedback here. So that's all that you're seeing from Neo right now. Um, your RSI is pretty neutral right now at around 50. Um, and then the same sort of thing on your MACD. Um, triple bearish divergence on your MACD, working in from right here. Um, again, one, like you didn't even break your uh, your 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 previous high. Um, so not even being able to break your previous high, then followed by that, um, a little bit of a retracement, followed by a second breakout, and then not being able to break um, your your original breakouts high. So um, consistent bearish divergence on Neo, seeing this coming. Um, so now what you're going to do is you're going to have sellers come in. Now, what you need to do on Neo is you need to make sure that you have a um, a lower low, or excuse me, a higher low. Um, kind of, I guess, depends on how you how you word that. So you want to make sure that your low your 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 level of low. Bear, uh, your level of bearish momentum on your MACD, that's a good way to put it, is lower than it previously was. So right here, it was around um, 0.68. Around here, it was around 0.63. Uh, um, and so here, as long as it's below that, it's going to be bullish because you're going to have lower levels of negative momentum coming into this market, into this coin specifically. And if you can do that, um, it'd be really good. Again, over here, you had triple... Um, go ahead and circle this a little bit so we can show this. Um, you had very uh, high levels of negative momentum followed by lower ones over here um, and so that's Neo for you again you're gonna have some sort of a pullback here a little bit of a retracement as everything is after a, a good run a great run you know 33% gain goals or gains um, is nothing to be ashamed of especially if you if you held this thing from swing high to swing low so that's Neo let's go and take a look at the chart one more time um, and here you are you're actually seeing a little bit of support already from this uh, 50 day EMA. So that's Neo to the USDT. What do you think about uh, what do you think Cardano can do by the end of the year? Um, yeah, okay, so let's talk about that. So that's a really hard thing. Um, 
it's really, really hard. I'm sure you'll hear, you'll hear a lot of analysts talk about this, but it's really, really hard to give a prediction on something by the end of the year just because so much can happen, right? I mean, you had people in January saying about how, like, all these coins would be, uh, like, tripled by the summertime, right? People were saying, oh, XRP was going to be five ten dollars by the summer you're gonna have neo at three hundred dollars ethereum was going to be this and bitcoin was going to be 25k by the summer and all this stuff um just because of how bullish the market was and then of course you saw everything um take a turn for the downwards and, and develop a very fine bear market uh so it's really hard to say about stuff like that but if i had to guess um personally um i think i've showed a scale like this before about bitcoin every year um the most the most bullish time for bitcoin is in the later part of the year and it's always been that way and let me pull up a chart so i can show you guys this again a nice fundamental thing that you guys are going to be able to use here i look like a ghost in the camera but <laughs> um bitcoin every year uh let's bitcoin start oops and let's go see if we can find an image here so there's a really good image that I'm looking for. Not sure if we. Oh, here it is. Perfect. So hopefully, what we're gonna be able to do here is zoom in a little bit, so that you guys can have a good like view of this. So here, let's go ahead and talk about this. I've showed this once on stream before. I posted it in my Discord back when I uh, was using my channel a lot, um, and this is something I always like to tell people because it's something that's so critical it's such a good information for you to know it's a fundamental like you should know this um if you're invested in cryptocurrency so here we have um 2015 you have a previous high um you know again your previous high and from december getting by a nice down uh bear trend uh reaching a new low um or a lower low on bitcoin then you have 2016 uh you know again a previous a new all-time high followed by a nice crash in the market a nice drop same thing in 2017 you had a, a a previous all-time high look I mean look at the momentum on that such insane levels of bullish divergence um, so you had a new all-time high in 2017 followed by a, a, a nice bear market a nice little crash and retracement on Bitcoin um, and then you had the two, same exact thing in 2018 you know a new all-time high followed by a nice crash in the market and so when people saw this, people thought it was new. People thought it was one of a kind. Um, we've never seen anything like this before. You know, you go back to 2014, and you, <laughs> and you would definitely know that there was worse times than this, right? Um, but again, this is nothing new. Same, same exact cycle has been happening for years now. You know, ever since the whole 2014 fiasco, you've had 2015, 16, 17, and now 18, all looking almost identical. Um, granted, we've had an extended bear market this year. Um, similar similar and i know crowns talked about this a lot very similar as to what happened in 2014 so you have to be careful that what we're in right now is uh is a bull trap because the and this is why him and me are saying be careful that it's a bull trap right i'm not saying it is but you know definitely be careful here because if you're breaking out with an ascending triangle like this at a at a new low at a new low level of bitcoin you'd expect to have decent momentum coming into this decent volume but you're not you couldn't even hit your measured move on this ascending triangle um which was supposed to you know touch this 50 percent retracement level so you're not even doing that and so it, without even touching that you're already seeing pullback which is scary so you're not even touching this resistance line yet and you're already getting fullback which is not necessarily the best thing but in, in the same sense after after you do have a run like this, it, pullback's expected. So I'm not saying it's gonna crash yet, but I was expecting it to go a little bit higher. I was expecting it to touch this 50% retracement level along this line of resistance that we've seen uh, so well established. So we gotta be careful here. You know, this is a market that you gotta be careful in because you could see lower lows to what we've already seen. You know, this isn't over yet. Until you break, until you break this downwards line of resistance, you're not gonna have a bull market. And that's just how it is. And you need to break it and hold on top of it. This is resistance. You need to use it as support. Once you break on top of it, once you do that, you're going to have yourself in a nice position here. And I see people trying to call this a cup and handle, right? I guess you can go on the one day and we can try to argue about that. I mean, like, let's go to the one day here. Because people are trying to argue that this could be a cup and handle, right? Um, there's a couple problems with that. One, <laughs> the whole bottom of the cup's like jagged and like horrible right so if you want to call this cup and handle i mean it's just 
sloppy. So people are trying to say that this could be a cup and handle, and then now what we're seeing here is we're seeing the pullback in the handle form. Um, personally, I don't think so. It's very, it's possible, but it's very unlikely in my opinion. Um, the whole bottom of the cup's ratchet. Uh, you have your right, uh, your right shoulder of your cup being lower than your left significantly by like a couple hundred dollars. So um, there's that as well. So I would just be careful about this. Um, currently, I'm bearish. Um, there's a reason I sold all my Bitcoin. Um, just kind of seeing how the market goes, right? Seeing how these candle body close works and all that so this is a really cool chart in fact you know what i'm going to do here is i'm going to copy this and i'm going to go paste it in the discord for any of you guys who are in there and if you guys want to join the discord by all means uh, oh god can you elaborate can you please elaborate i've heard something similar um but ada has significantly more supply 30 billion i think i don't mean price wise i mean percentage uh did you mean did you buy it 20k no i did not buy it 20k i i um I fooled around with some buy orders below 20k. Like I, I put some um, fiat stuff to trade around because there's so much volatility over here, right? So it was some good, it was some good areas to trade around. I mean, look at some of these swing trades. It's it was crazy. I mean, you had swing trades going from 10,600 all the way up to like 17k. So you had great swing trades over here. So I had some. Uh, <laughs> So I had some um, I, I did buy some down down in here, but I didn't I didn't buy any Bitcoin up here um, Not at all uh, not even close. Um, I, I bought some Bitcoin like Where was it? I made some trades over here right in this area, but I didn't, I, uh, I avoided buying from the all-time high. That's generally a bad idea And I gained I, I did you know I gained a lot of money in that last in that massive bull run um lost some too um i think everybody at, at, at one point was a little bit greedy on like taking profits because it was just, it just kept going up um no matter what you thought so it was it was a once in a lifetime thing right it was just crazy. i've never seen a market do that <laughs> uh i'm in a, i'm in at sub three thousand dollars i'm still good oh you got in at three thousand at sub three thousand that's nice dude I'm also in on ADA, so I certainly hope you are right. Um, but did you base your prediction on any recent news or just the chart patterns? Um, so it was both. It was both. If you guys know, I made a video on talk. I made a video and a tweet, and I was also in the Discord talking about everything that was happening with Cardano. You know, let's go ahead and look at Cardano because now that we're finished, Neo, we can go take a look at ADA to BTC. So it was a couple things, right? I made a video talking about Cardano, um, talking about how they got added the book, uh, added the Coinbase. Um, they broke their line of resistance. There was so much bullish divergence here. Or, uh, well, they did break their line of resistance. They broke their primary line of resistance. So here you had you had bullish divergence. I mean, we talked about this, right? You had quadruple more than that, probably even quintuple. I mean, let's just talk about this here. You had one, two, three, four five levels consistently lower levels of negative momentum on your rsi like screaming bullish divergence right then you had your macd i mean look look at this you had so like this was looking beautiful at the time let me zoom in here a little bit you were having this at the time uh, i mean you were having consistent lower levels of negative momentum on your macd as well starting up here working our way down here down here this was a little bit of a of a weird zone to be in, but again, this is all grouped in the same, um, I don't want to call it mountain, but so consistent lower levels of negative momentum on your MACD, you know, with the exception of a little bit of sloppiness over here um, because of just what was happening with the BTC price transactions. But um, you had a lot of indicators here. And then we go over to our candlesticks, of course, um, and we saw that it was breaking out, right? We had our line of resistance getting broke, followed by an immediate breakout. So that could have triggered your buy. Um, it would have been a pretty low risk because you had a, a decent line of support with fairly, uh, fairly nice, about four touches on it. So, um, and then of course, of course, you had your Coinbase news as well, right? You had your Coinbase news coming out and saying that ADA um, could very well get added to Coinbase. And so, um, as soon as I heard that, I already owned um, Cardano before that even got announced. So I had I had bought Cardano. I don't know what the BTC value was because I was trading it with USD. But let's go find out. I bought my Cardano over here at around 12 cents. Um, sold it. 
I took profits, I think, over here at around... Well, what, where did I? I actually forget where I took profits. But I put it all in the BTC. Um, I took profits out of Cardano. I wasn't too worried. Um, I was happy with what I had made on it. Um, of course, I could have kept it and I could have traded this. You know, it could have gone up another three cents per share. But I decided to, you know, ride this Bitcoin wave that I saw over here instead of riding the Cardano wave. And both at the end of the day were great, were great picks. So... Um, so to fully answer your question, Dustin Lin, also welcome. Um, it was a mix of both. So I saw the TA was looking great. I saw bullish divergence on my indicators. I saw bullish di indicators um, on the chart and the candlesticks. And then I saw, um, and then when the news came out, it was really confirmation. I was like, all right, this is, uh, this was a good decision. So that was uh, what motivated my Cardano trade. And, and again, the Cardano trade was also part of the Patreon. If you guys were a part of that, then anyone i know s several of the patreons decided to get in on that cardano trade and they are sitting happy now right some things i've been seeing i haven't sharded anything myself what's up two crowns one cup oh god i, I okay electric bird i freaking get i get that reference <laughs> you got the ha 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 all right what's going on I only started with a dollar dude that's good if you literally started with a dollar and you've so think about it this way you have to think about it so I hear people all the time they're like I have five thousand dollars in the crypto market it doesn't matter about how much you have in it matters about your portfolio percentage growth so right there that's a 20 to 30 X gain if you started with a dollar and now you have 20 to 30 dollars you just 20 to 30 X your portfolio that's incredible like that's literally incredible like that's awesome for real um so what you do is you, if you can learn to do that with small amounts of money when you start putting in a thousand five thousand dollars then if you 20 to 30 x that then you have <laughs> right if you have five thousand dollars in or a thousand dollars in, then you're sitting at 20 to 30k you know if you had 2k in you'd be sitting at 40 to 60k um it's all about knowing what you're doing with portfolio percentage growth so nothing to be ashamed of dude at all thank you for the explanation absolutely uh absolutely dustin dude glad i could help dude welcome to the stream it's good having you here my man it's a lot of allowance i don't <laughs> i never got an allowance dude <laughs> i was i never had that blessing i worked right i worked as I'm doing right now. It's ironic because I work two jobs. I do like I do this right, and then I also work for a bank. I know it's ironic. I work for cryptocurrencies and a bank at the same time. But how do you guys like my pink cup, by the way? I grabbed it like right before I came up. I got that and like a purpley shirt on. <laughs> DJ says he gets one cent a week. I'm a double agent, dude. I think I already told Mission Control I would leave if I was allowed to. If it was my decision, I would leave the bank and come full time on cryptos and YouTube and HOC and all that. If it was my decision, but unfortunately, I can't do that yet. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. But as of uh, can't do that at least not this month. Hopefully pretty soon. I'd love cause. You know, banks boring, am I right? Banks are just boring. What was my first job? So my first job, I worked for the United States Soccer Federation as a referee. That started when I was 16 years old, 15 or 16 years old. Um, and I did that, and that paid really well. Started at like $20 an hour. Um, it was really hard to get. It was an absolute pain to get, especially because I was so young. But I got it, started refing like... 11 year olds or 12 year olds and it was like $20 an hour so that was nice it was hard work but and it was like a big thing to get because it was actually the United States Soccer Federation so that was um interesting it was a really good experience though did that for several years uh worked at a camp for three years I worked at a it's like organic juice health store um acai bowl place for uh another year and a half and Fun fact, my first YouTube video was in fourth grade, so like, I've always been a YouTuber, right? Basically. Smart move. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd call them shit coins, right? Um, 
because there's a lot of good coins out there and a lot of people just give it hate and they jump on the bandwagon of oh everything's such a bad coin because x right and a lot of people just do that but um there are there are good altcoins there are but btc was definitely like the move here it was safe it was easy it was like such a no brain it was like a like a brain dead decision for me it was just it was so so foolproof um such low level of uh, of losing this trade and so i figured i'd set a, a nice buy order a bit pretty much put my paycheck on this buy order uh and it rose up so i'm uh i'm you know i'm sitting happy now respect the ta <laughs> electric bird just couldn't stay away busted <laughs> well welcome back electric bird good to have you dude Games are only like one hour. Yeah, games were only, they were less than that. They were like 45 minutes or something. And I got, so it was like, but you have like a half time. So like total, it was like an hour, but like the games itself were like 45 minute games. So, what's up Joseph, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. So that's, I think we covered Cardano now. Oh no, we didn't even cover Cardano. So let's talk about what was happening. So here, oh my God, Cardano looks so nice. I mean, the RSI on Cardano was incredible, too. It was 85 almost. But this was good. This was crucial. The fact that you had... I don't even want to draw it like that. You had higher levels of positive momentum consistently on Cardano. That is amazing. That's what you want to see. And then you also had lower levels of negative momentum, right? Coming down here. One, two, three... I don't, I'm probably not going to count that one, but like you could, I guess, maybe. I, I probably wouldn't count it, but you had lower, consistent lower levels of negative momentum coming in on your RSI. Cardano was looking beautiful, still is. Um, of course, here you were pretty oversold, or overbought, excuse me, not oversold. You're pretty overbought here, so you're going to have some sort of a pullback. Again, it's just because you've gone up from 12 cents to 18 cents, so, or to 19 cents, 19 and a half, wow. What a run for Cardano. Um, you've had a great price, you know, great raise in your total price evaluation. 12 cents to 19 and a half cents. Beautiful stuff. Um, you're going to start getting a little bit of pullback. You'll, again, you'll probably find support somewhere around the 16 cents level, right above the 16 cents level. You'll probably start seeing a little, a little bit of support um, because up at that level, you're going to have your 200 day, you're going to have your 50 day, and then you're also going to have a lot of candle body closings um, up in, let me go ahead and zoom in over here, up in this area. So you have all of these over here, you have these over here, and then you have this one over here. So you could have even said, guys, I mean, Another good thing for Cardano is, I mean, you could have said that this was an ascending triangle on Cardano as well. I mean, you really could have. Well, eh, yeah, you, de you definitely could have. Because if we would have drawn... Okay, this is going to get really crazy for a second. All right, so bear with me. You could have drawn something like... Something like this. <laughs> something along these levels. And you would have had an ascending triangle on Cardano. So... But this is sloppy because we have like bars everywhere now. I mean, because I mean, look, you look at how many candle candle body touchings you had on this top line of resistance, right? You had like one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is Cardano. You're gonna see some pullback here, but I mean, if you look at your RSI, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so we know where where we could you know very well retrace to, probably just above the 16 cents level. But time will tell. Well, I guess we'll see if we're right because we're already seeing some support. Okay, so here's where we're getting our support from. Right, right over here you have candle body closings, you have wicks, you have a couple candle body closings right in this area. You have wicks over here, and you're using this as support. What would or what was previously resistance is now getting used as support. So again, a crucial level. Um, to know for cryptocurrencies Your thoughts on XLM dude, of course dude, we'll get some XLM in here. I Think crown was saying he was really um really bullish on XLM At least for the short term I also aspire to be a crypto trader full-time dude. That would be great. That would be great. I Don't know if I'll ever be a crypto trader full-time, but hopefully I can be like a crypto person full-time so that way I can create live stream, I can create content, do live streams, interact, do like all that crap. 
um, full time and then like trade cryptos too with all of that that would be goals right that would be the dream the dream top of the evening we got seven minutes till top of the evening welcome back coach k of course it's great to have you here it's my pleasure to be working with you guys tonight my name is brendan tca also known as brendan or the crypto analyst yeah again if you guys have any questions requests suggestions be sure to put those in the chat box and i will get to them as fast as i can if you guys haven't already hit the like button and it helps out the channel a lot, completely free, right? So let's talk about XLM, let's move in. By the way, man, do you want Mr. Electric Bird? Would you, <laughs> Electric Bird, dude. What happens to Crown when you go into his chat and say, and he sees the name Electric Bird? Does he, like, does he, like, just whip out the Temis racket? The Temis? My God, this thing's shot, jeez. Does he whip out the tennis racket? I know he's talking about how, uh, how he likes to whip out his tennis racket and, you know, take a take them the birds. <laughs> I don't know why he has such a hatred for birds, dude, but he makes it very clear on his channel. <laughs> All right, let's talk about XLM. What do we got here? Top of the evening. What's up, Coach Guy? <clears throat> Dustin Lynn, do you have your own channel? Yeah, so I do. Um, I mainly work for Hyped on Crypto, though. Um, most of my content, like. <laughs> Pretty much, at least recently, like all of my content has been going to HOC. Um, I work for Hyped on Crypto um, as a fundamental analyst. Also, do some TA, as you can see. Um, I do. It's called, you know, the Crypto Analyst on YouTube. Um, but most of my content is on Hyped on Crypto, like 90% of it. So um, I, I, I'll probably start uploading there a little bit because I hate the fact that it's just sitting there as a stagnant channel. Um, because I built, you know, I did build a, I did build a pretty good following, and like not a lot of them followed me over. So I want to start uploading something that I don't do for HOC. So like on here, I do like news and like fundamental stuff. So over there, I want to start uploading like a video, maybe like a video or two a week, of just like something different that I don't do for HOC. But like 90% of my content is going to be for HOC because I work for them and they're the dudes, dude. So, I don't know. I've still got a side, but that's like beside the point. Because right now, again, ninety percent of ninety percent of the stuff that I'm gonna upload is gonna be over here. I do have a Twitter though, which you can follow me on, and you always see me in the hyped on crypto Discord. Boom, linked in the linked in the chat box somewhere. Great to have you guys. Let's talk about what do we got here? Um, Capital is wet. <laughs> Dinosaur dodo. Oh, yeah, you got pooped on by a bird. That's why you got so angry. Uh, sorry, I've been lurking for the past 30 minutes. Enjoying the TA. Thank you so much, Michael, dude. Great to have you, dude. Dude, there's nothing wrong with that, Michael. Nothing at all. So let's talk about XLM. So here, I mean, <laughs> we talked about this, right? Like, do you guys remember, like, several streams ago? Like, hold on, water break. Several streams ago, we talked about how perfect this looked. Like, this was so nice and we talked about this i mean one like just so many candle body touchings showing very very good level of support very fine level of resistance falling wedge just perfect again right we talked about how good of a trade this could have been on stream and then sure enough here you have it breaks out off of its right through right through its 50 day and 200 day ema shooting with a single a single four hour candle breaking through both of those um out of your resistance and then as soon as this hooked um uh, and, and hooked over here and started going again you know this would have been your sign if you if you didn't buy down in here right so let's i mean let's go ahead and check we we had this drawn of bullish divergence coming in for <laughs> for xlm um you had again this as well i, I forget what we called this let me go ahead and zoom in over here. But you had, I mean, just crazy levels of bullish diver, like unseen. Look at how many consistent lower lows you had. Lower levels of negative momentum on your RSI. It was incredible. So um, there was just so much bullish divergence on XLM. It was like, again, another great trade. It wasn't one that I bought because I, I was trading Cardano at the time. But um, turned out to be a phenomenal swing trade. I believe... I, I could be wrong here, but I think I'm pretty sure that was a Patreon setup as well. 
by Mr. Keaton himself. Dude, Keaton's been killing it. He's been freaking doing a great job. So let's talk about what's happening now, right? Let us check. You know, first things first, we're gonna draw in our uh, our fib retracements. Swing low. We can use this as our high, I guess, or we can use our previous one at our, as our high. Ah, eh, let's just do it from this one. Well, let's see what we got over here. Just to get like a good perspective of everything that's happening. So we have that. And we're gonna have this boy over here. Alright. Let's freaking do it. Chat's going crazy. Big red. <laughs> For Christian's mom. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Electric Word. Silly dilly. <laughs> um. So here we are, uh, actually finding some support over here at our 3A2 retracement level for XLM. But I mean, there's not too much to say. Again, of course, you had a monstrous run. Like this is a huge, huge, huge run for XLM. So for this to be consolidating and you know correcting itself a little bit is perfectly normal. Um, you're seeing some support over here at the 3A2. Um, if you look left on the 3A2, you're I mean, you definitely do have like levels of support all along in here, so you could be using that as support. If you fall down, you're going to be seeing yourselves at around the 3,650 range for support. We were here using these previous candle body closings as support, um, and then we'll have to see where our EMAs catch up to us. Um, fall below that, you're going to have your 3550 being used as support over here, um, because this was where you consolidated previously before going on this monstrous run, but. That's just XLM. I mean, of course, at the, at the moment, it's looking great. You're having consistent higher levels of positive momentum coming in from your RSI. I mean, look at this. I mean, if that doesn't say great, then I don't know what does. Um, very consistent levels of higher momentum. Um, lower levels of negative momentum on your RSI. Beautiful. Um, so we'll see. I mean, again, we have to see where, where this all plays out to, right? Um, if we look to our MACD, you, have, uh, you definitely have clear bearish divergence. So no matter how much you, how how you want to draw this, excuse me, um, you definitely do have bearish divergence on your RS, on your MACD, excuse me. So clear bearish divergence on your MACD. You're going to be seeing some pullback here, uh, but it's still great. It's still going good. So yeah, I mean, no matter how you want to draw this, you just have straight bearish divergence on your MACD. So I mean, you got a triple up here. You have triple down here, and that's XLM for you. So. But I mean, it's, I mean, you're, again, you're seeing it find some support in here, but, uh, you know, hopefully you rode this all the way out and you took profits as soon as you started seeing this bearish divergence, but what a beautiful, beautiful run from Stellar Lumens. And another good thing to talk about here is the possibility, the high possibility that this could get added to Coinbase, right? This was another one of the Coinbase coins along with Cardano. It was Cardano, uh... Cardano ADA, Stellar Lumens, XLM, uh, 0x Coin, uh, Zcash, and what was the fifth coin? There's one other coin. Anyway, five coins that might get out of the Coinbase. Of course, XLM being one of those um, that could possibly get out of the Coinbase. We did a video on it um, already, but part, you know, definitely that playing a factor is everything that happened over here. Hey bro, we oh, I'll just keep your headphones. Hey bro, we look at Vignette. Uh, is it showing bullish divergence on the RSI? I'm applying what I've been learning from you. Dude. That's so great to hear, Straw Hat, dude. I'm glad I can help you out. Glad I can, um, just hopefully be a positive influence on you. Um, as there are <laughs> a lot of people who like to show themselves and be like, buy my course. It's only five hundred dollars, and then at the end of it, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I'm glad I'm able to help you out, dude. Um, same thing with Hyped on Crypto. Hopefully we can help you out in any way possible. Let's go ahead and take a look. We haven't looked at Ven yet. We're gonna look at Ven to BTC. Uh, of course, if you want it, jeez, oh, that's not good. Um, that's really not good. Um, yikes. All right, so <laughs> there's a lot to talk about why this is really bad. Uh, all right, so. 
first of all, let's, there's a lot of things to talk about here. Uh, let me go through chat a little bit. Excellent, TA, uh, HOC. Um, you have talent, uh, autocratic, mechani mech mechanistic. Uh, how about the FA, the fundamental analysis? About IBM and XLM? Yeah, so we were just talking a little bit about the uh, the, the XLM, um, fundamental analysis. Again, a, lo a lot of that was just you had so much bullish divergence coming in on XLM from your candlesticks, from your RSI, from your MACD. It was in a falling wedge, like it broke above all of its, uh, all of its EMAs. You had so much bullish divergence on your TA, and then as soon as you had all of that like breaking out, you as like as it was breaking out with like a good level of volume already, you had Coinbase come out and be like, oh hey, we might list this as well, and then it just went through the roof. Like it was like a that like, that's the volume that you need on like Bitcoin, but. Coinbase can't come out and be like, we're adding Bitcoin to our exchange. And then it just shoots to the roof because they already have Bitcoin. How funny would that be if Coinbase is like, all right, let's see how we can re how much we can really manipulate the market. And Coinbase comes out on Twitter and they're like, breaking news, we're adding Bitcoin to Coinbase. You'd probably have people, <laughs> you'd still probably have people go and buy Bitcoin because of it. You'd probably see it like rise. That would be a really funny April Fool's joke if they came out on like April 4th or April 1st or whatever it is. And they were like, <laughs> breaking news, we're adding Bitcoin pairs. Throw some desert dwellers on and then we're talking, crossing the desert. Yeah, so, um, yeah, dude, we'll go into some um, some fundamentals right after we do Ven, Mr. Electric Bird. We'll go into some fundamentals about IBM and XLM. So hopefully that sounds juicy. Bitcoin right now is sitting at seventy three thirty seven thousand three hundred and thirty dollars. Boom. Ooh, let's talk about Ven. So Ven, uh, this was a crucial point for Ven. It really was. And there's some scary things to talk about here. Excuse me. So this is your falling wedge on Ven. Falling wedges are respected a, a good percentage of the time. You have a fall. Oh my God, I have the hiccups. You have a falling wedge on Ven, um, pretty well established. I mean, you only had two touches down here, so that was a pretty rough line of support. I, I mean, you could have drawn this up over here and been like, "There's your third." I mean, you have like two more touches over here if you add that. But what you did is you broke below your support you broke downwards out of your out of your falling wedge which is really bad um and on top of all this right on top of everything here btc was spiking btc was having a ton of price transaction everything all the altcoins usually follow btc so hardly difficult is now hosting the stream with 24 viewers from twitch thank you so much hardly difficult it means a lot dude it is um, you know, my honor to be able to participate in that. So, dude, we do not take it lightly. And madly appreciated. Glad, dude, glad for that, man. So, thank you a lot. Um, but what you had here is you had yourself breaking fine lines of... Oh, my God, my phone is blowing up from something. I think you guys are following me on Twitter or something. Um, I'm going to go and turn that on. Do not disturb. But what you had here is you, you had your line of resistance, right? We knew that this was very well established and you didn't see yourself touching this. Again, you were below both of your, you know, both your 50 day and your 200 day EMA breaking your line of support here while Bitcoin was on the run. So everything's going up, right? You should be gaining crypto free. Welcome, dude. It's so good to have you in here. Thank you so much for the follow. Do not take it lightly. Welcome to the HOC stream. My name is Brendan, otherwise known as Brendan TCA or the crypto analyst. We're going through some technical analysis right now, talking about why Venn is dumping and why this is pretty bad for Venn. And we're also going to be going through some fundamentals, talking about how uh, cryptocurrencies are going to get starting or it's going to start getting used in schools and all that. So we're going to be talking about that, some XLM and some IBM fundamentals uh, right after this. But um, going back to Venn here, what you have is you have yourself breaking this lower line of support really bad when you should be going up, right? The altcoins follow Bitcoin. So Bitcoin went up. 11, you know, around $1,300. And not only do you have Venn not going up at all, right? Not even getting affected by the price transaction of BTC. You have it just continue to plummet, which is really bad out of a rise, out of a falling wedge. So you have what should be bullish divergence over here of yourself bouncing off support. You know, you don't even see any bullish divergence from your support. You don't even see BTC touch the 50 day EMA. Um, so it falls straight out of it, 
plummets while while Bitcoin's going up. Keep that in mind. It is plummeting while Bitcoin's going up. You have your double bottom over here. You know, very good level of support. Um, not even getting phased. Like you don't even get phased. You don't even stop this candle. You know, you don't. You do not even stop the selling pressure that you have from Bitcoin. Uh, continues to fall um, and is still continuing continuing the fall as we're speaking. So. We can look over to the left here to see where we're going to be finding support. It's going to be at candle body closings uh, and consolidations over here. So um, you could be seeing <clears throat> you could be seeing a little bit of support soon. But if we look at a fib retracement from swing high to swing low over here, it's going to be something around this. So I mean. It's just not looking too hot right now. You're right in between your 618 and your 786 your indicators. Um, and you don't have a ton of support. Again, your 786 is going to be a decent support. But, like, um, this thing's just falling. A lot of bad stuff happening. If you look at your RSI, you're having lower levels of negative momentum. Um, or lower, or uh, higher levels of negative momentum and lower levels of positive momentum. If we go over here and we look, you know, consistent lower levels of positive momentum. Um, and then you're just having, uh, all right, let's get rid of that. You're having lower or worse levels of uh, negative momentum over here. So it's just, it's just not looking good. I mean, if you, no matter how you want to look at this, it's just, it's just rough, to say the least. So that's a uh, Ven, not looking too hot at the moment. I mean, we can look at the MACD and uh, see what we got going on over here, but. Yeah, so, he, okay, so you do have some bullish divergence on your MACD, I'll say that, right? You have this. You have this going for you. You have this kind of going for you, but the problem with this is that you don't have, you don't have enough volume. And over here, you're having consistently higher levels of negative momentum, right? One, two, over in here. It's not what you want to be seeing. Especially not to reverse this. So I mean, it's not even really showing signs of a reversal because what you have over here. I mean, look at your buying pressure. I mean, you can kind of see that this has been coming. You have triple bearish divergence on your MACD. I mean, I think this could even be a yeah. I mean, look at that. You have one, two, three, four completely respected, accurate um, signs from your MACD just showing that this thing was looking like it was going to dump. Uh, you could say that this was a pennant or some triangle on your MACD breaking out bearishly. So fairly large measured move, and you're seeing the repercussions of that on uh, on the price evaluation of then. So, and, and the thing that's an another thing that's scary here is how low your momentum is. Right, it's going up, driving your bullish, then you're bearish, then you're bullish, and there's little baby moves. Um, so it's a little bit scary for Ven right now. Not something I would want to be in, but uh, you could say that you maybe have a, a little bit of bullish divergence on your MACD, uh, but nothing too crazy, right? Because there's just not enough volume in there. So it's going to take, it's probably going to take Ven retracing some more uh, to find some sort of a, a strong bottom. Ven and BRB purging. <laughs> Keep uh keep up the good show. Thank you so much, Electric Bird. Yeah, I mean we talked about this last time, talking about whether or not this is gonna go in the grave, and it didn't look like it because we are still in this uh this falling wedge. But man, I hope you had a stop loss. You you gotta have a stop loss at at falling wedges because while they do stand good for most of the time, um the times that they fall out bearishly out of uh, out of right or out of falling wedges, um are the times that you really need a stop loss in place because. You break down out of this, like, it's just not good. So, let's go ahead and over here. We're going to talk about this. We're going to be talking about uh, crypto insiders uh, and, you know, essentially the toughest exam in finance and how they're adding a cryptocurrency section for for this exam, right? This is huge. This is crucial. Um, going along hand-in-hand hand with the G20's decision and Congress's decision from the United States today, um to be like more like really bullish on cryptocurrencies now you're seeing more adoption from it right you're seeing swiss banks you're seeing german banks you're seeing uh i believe it's turkey and 
Amsterdam also being extremely bullish and allowing their societies to work with cryptocurrencies now. Uh, we looked at New Guinea earlier. Of course, you have Asia being like Japan, South Korea, um, and now you have all the G20 countries that are working really, really well with cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. Um, you even have India saying some decent, some like kind of bullish things, which is odd coming from them because they generally don't like cryptocurrencies, as we know. Um, do I have water on my shirt? No, oh, I do. But here it is. So um, <clears throat> let's talk about this. So chalk this up. Another sign of cryptocurrencies have grabbed the Wall Street's attention. Have grabbed Wall Street's attention. The charted financial uh, analyst, the CFA program, has announced that cryptocurrencies and blockchain will now fo uh, will now form part uh, of the all circulum part of the circulum. I cannot say that. Um, oh, is that really all they have to say? <laughs> that was really short. Essentially, what this does, though, is it, it's more than what you would think, right? Exibble, Exibia, thank you so much for the follow on Twitch. Great to have you here. It's my pleasure to be work, to be working with you, to be your host. My name is Brendan. If you have any questions, concerns, tips, be sure to leave those in the chat, and I will read those ASAP. So what this does here is it kind of shows that institutional value is getting added to cryptocurrencies you wouldn't have the hardest finance exam in the country adding something that has no meaning or value or future or scalability you want it it just would not make sense if something doesn't have intrinsic value it's not going to be getting put on some of the hardest and most meaningful finance and business exams uh, in the country you're not going to be you're not going to be seeing cryptocurrencies uh, being used as university level classes right there are universities that are now starting cryptocurrency courses and classes I mean you have Tronics University over in Asia that's doing this as well and you have you know like actual like mainstream universities that are also doing this so and now of course you have it getting added to exams in addition to the classes so now you have the people who are going to be taking the classes to learn more about cryptocurrencies getting influenced about what cryptocurrencies are and then now you have the people who maybe aren't even interested in cryptocurrencies you know what they do now is they have to learn about cryptocurrencies they have to research it because it's going to be on their exam for, for for their business degree if they want to get it so um you're seeing cryptocurrencies become more mainstream and with this comes institutional money uh you you can't have something keep continually grow to become more mainstream and it not gain price evaluation. So that's what we're seeing here. Again, I'm not saying it's a full market reversal, but I'm saying this is great long-term stuff for Bitcoin because what you have is you have progress, which is permanent, and then you have price evaluation, which is temporary. The price of Bitcoin is always going to be changing. It's always a bit going to be you know, consolidating, flowing up and down, but the progress of Bitcoin is what usually never gets reversed. So with us getting this, um, you know, progress is permanent for the most part. So... That's why uh, really bullish for the for the long term of cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, and uh, a, a lot of these cryptocurrencies. Let me get a drink of water real fast. Mm. But that's it. So, what else we got to talk about here? We got about forty five minutes left. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. I'm just gonna make sure everything's going smooth, going smooth. Boom, boom, boom. It is 11.16 on a Wednesday night, middle of the week. <laughs> so not too much stuff to be happening, right? Sure. Uh, where are you guys from, by the way? Let me know where you guys are from because, you know, of course, a lot of the people who have worked tomorrow probably are going to be in bed. Um, and for those of you guys who aren't, I guess you guys might be on the West Coast because it's a little bit earlier over there. It's what eight o'clock well let's go ahead and go back to our chart let's go ahead and talk what do we want to talk about can we talk about someone was talking about xrp earlier xrp to bdc why do we have this line here ew whoa xrp to usd Oh my god, what a dump. Why is it dumping now?
Interesting. See, it's that's that's weird. Hmm. So let's go ahead and take a. Oh, it's not what I wanted. Let's go ahead and take a look over here and see what we got going. Actually, let's take a look. So you have higher levels on your RSI. That's good. Skadoosh. Boom, boom, boom. Can we even draw this? Oh, it's just not what I wanted. Mm. So you have higher levels of positive momentum on your RSI. And that's looking really good. Uh, if you go over here to your MACD, zoom ourselves in a little bit. I don't know why this is so big either. Higher levels of positive momentum on your MACD. These things are all funky tonight. Let me zoom in a little bit over here. Well, is that a double top? Oh, it is, unfortunately. It's ever so slightly lower, pretty much though. It's pretty much what you have here is a is a nice double top on XRP's MACD. Pretty bearish, um, pretty bearish, but nothing too serious. Of course, you have bearish divergence on your MACD. You're seeing lower levels of positive momentum coming in from your MACD. You're seeing lower lower levels of positive momentum coming in. <laughs> there we are, coming in from your RSI. Um, you know, long term looking pretty decent, but uh, short term looking like you're going to bounce off the 50 day EMA over here, uh, which I mean, you're of course, you're already seeing some some sort of support from from previous candle body closings, you know, because you have a lot of them in this area. I mean, you have right here, you have all in here, um, over here. And then, of course, you have some more even over in this area as well. So not looking too bad. Prod by. Can I call you Leanne? Because that's a really hard name to pronounce. Let's go ahead and take a look at Doge. Actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and look at it and see if we can find any form of support. So let's draw that as a support line, see how well that gets respected. And uh, yeah, we're going to keep that. That's going to be a really good support line, actually. So we're going to keep that up. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at Dogecoin. Dogecoin, is it fine if we look at that to BTC, my man? Or woman? Dogecoin to BTC? Oh my gosh. Um. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. My goodness. I hope you took profits here. Yeah, so it's, jeez, that is a beautiful run from Dogecoin, my goodness. Mr. Prod, let's take a look at this. What do we got? Why do these things look funky? Is it my screen? Or is it just the trading view chart? It's just the trading view chart. This whole thing looks funky, even the RSI. That's weird. So what you have here, it's, I mean, it looks pretty decent. What you're having is consistent higher levels on your RSI. Um, let's take a look over here. Looks like everything's going down. Yeah, just like temporarily. What you're having is you're just having uh, everything's again. A lot of things are going to be following Bitcoin right now, but you had a beautiful run from everything, right? You had a beautiful run. Oh, that's not what I wanted. You had a beautiful run from Dogecoin. So of course it's going to have a retracements, and that's what this is. It's not dying, but you know, if you guys know me, I'm not a very good. I'm not a very big fan of Dogecoin. <laughs> um, just because it has no like intrinsic value but it does go on runs so beautiful levels of beautiful lo i mean when's the last time you saw volume like this on doge my gosh i mean you haven't seen volume like this since last year <laughs> that's awesome so here you have you i mean we can you know actually a really good thing to do here would be a fib retracement so what we're going to do is we're going to draw up a fib retracement talking about what exactly we got going on. Boom. So that's going to be our fib retracement. Um, and of course, we're respecting the TA here is because you are... Well, let me go ahead and move that over even a little bit more. Skadoosh. So here, what you're having here... Here, here excuse me. Uh, trying to get that... Ex 
pretty accurate. So what you're having here is you're having your 618 being used as a as a level of support, which is pretty common, uh, pretty common level of uh, of retracement levels for a lot of this stuff. Um, and you're seeing that used to support right now. Again, we have a candle body poking into it. Uh, buy orders coming in, pushing it back up. We got to see where this candle ends. Of course, you know it's another 36 minutes till this candle ends, but uh, nothing too bad. I mean, you could I look from the looks of this. I mean, I haven't even charted this yet, but it looks like this is a pretty well established falling wedge on, on on BTC. Draw something like along the lines of this, and it just looks like a nice falling wedge to me. But um, broke out of that. <laughs> I mean, holy crap! Respect the TA right here, but broke out of that with nice levels of momentum and this is what everyone wants to see BTC do right hi man can you have a look at aunt uh, great TA learning a lot yo mr. MP thank you so much dude. means a lot thank you for the kind words I can absolutely take a look at ontology coin right after this so let's go ahead and look over here um, your RSI of course you're hooking over here probably the level that you wanted to sell on and again 85 when the RSI is really high um, so probably as soon as you saw that start hooking, I would have looked to sell. Um, wow, your MACD is crazy, crazy good. Seeing lower levels of positive momentum coming in from your MACD. Uh, I mean, that was just such a run from Dogecoin, my gosh. I wonder if that was like partial to a, a pump and dump group or what, but... Uh, again, probably like bearish for the short term. Let this consolidate. Let it bleed a little bit. You know, let your RSI get a little bit back in the normal zone. You're still, <laughs> you're still, you're still really high on the RSI. So, let this thing play out. Let it see what it wants to do. Uh, definitely don't want to buy right now. Uh, it'd be extremely risky, but I guess if you're hodling it, then it's a different story. Do I use Poloniex? Uh, Mr. I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, Exhibi, I do not use Poloniex. Poloniex. Um, I made an account for them, and I just never wanted to use them. So they are, I don't want to say they're like a sketchy exchange. I call them a tier two exchange. There's three tiers to exchanges. There's tier one, tier two, and tier three. Um, tier one, I think are extremely safe. Like I put my money into them with no worry of getting hacked. I know that there's the possibility of them getting hacked over an exchange always, but um, whenever I do put money into a tier one exchange, I am I would be shocked if it would get hacked, right? <clears throat> um, tier one exchanges would be things like Coinbase, Binance, Bittrex, and GDAX, and I think there's one other one. I forget. Those are all the ones I'm familiar with. Robinhood. That was that was it. Um, tier two exchanges would be like Poloniex, um, <clears throat> Poloniex, oh, uh, Huboy. What are some of these other ones? Um, there's so many now. Um, I can't even remember their names. I'd have to have like a list, but Poloniex is essentially listed as like a tier two, and then you have like tier three exchanges, which are like no names, right? Ones that I would never ever trade on. Hit BC, hit, uh, hit B, what was it called? Hit BTC or whatever. Tier 2 exchange. And essentially, what tier 2 exchange means is that they have had troubles with hackings. Um, they've been have. Oh, what was another good one? Uh, Kraken would be a, a tier 2 exchange, in my opinion. Um, but essentially all tier 2 exchanges is ones that have had trouble with people withdrawing and depositing money had they previously had trouble with people getting hacked people losing their money stuff getting lost and that's what makes the tier 2 exchange not necessarily meaning it's bad but just meaning that they've had a history with um with some sort of bad thing happening but overall getting used as a good exchange i want to put my money on there just because nothing i want on there is is like nothing on there I want to buy I guess that I can't get on Binance generally um, I really like the vetting process that uh, that Binance does in order to list a cryptocurrency on their exchange so I, I trust the, the Binance vetting process if you haven't looked into it I would definitely recommend it because it's a pretty nice one um, you know in the least but do I use BitMEX I don't um, so I live in the United States so I can't use BitMEX unless I used a VPN but like even then that's illegal 
and the states have been cracking down on that. Some person over, I believe it's in Cali, um, was a huge short trader using using one of these shorting websites. I don't I don't think it said which one, but she and she was caught, and they took all of her Bitcoin, and now she has to go to jail for like money laundering or something. And so like for that reason, like right now, I know it's like the chance of that happening is like super low, but like I just don't want to mess with that. It's just not worth it for me. Um, there's another shorting website that I might use called like J JFAX or something like that. I know uh, Crypto Highlander on Twitter was uh, talking about it. His name's Rick Lewis, I think, on stream. Um, you guys will see him in the YouTube chat here. But um, she, it was like a huge, huge amount of money that that they that they took from her. But Darabit, I've never heard of Darabit, but this one's called like JFAX or like JDAX or something like that. And it's a short one that I've been looking into. I don't have too much history with shorting. Um, the closest thing I'll do to shorting is like if something were like up here and I wanted to take profits, I'd put it into U uh, into Tether or to put it into like a US dollar wallet and then I'd let it drop and then I'd buy back over here and it's kind of like fake shorting, but still like similar, if that makes any sense. You What you do, but like with shorting like in that way, you don't have leverage or anything like that. So it's a little bit different and you don't have like contracts and Mr. Brian, dude, what's up? Welcome. Dude doesn't know what he's talking about in Cali. She was a local Bitcoin dealer. Was she? I was, we might be talking about something different, uh, Chris. I am actually very, very confident that we're talking about something different because I read the article that you're talking about, Chris, and that one was a very sad thing as well because I saw that she was, <clears throat> I know the one that you're talking about. Um, the whole Bitcoin dealer, that was different. Um, that's kind of a like an unfortunate situation, but yeah, they're just different, unfortunately. Or I guess fortunate. fortunately and unfortunately, I guess it'd be better for it to be one person than two. But yeah, essentially what you're having is the US cracking down. The whole point of this, <laughs> this is a total rabbit trail. The whole point of this is between the person that Chris was talking about and the, and the person that I was talking about, is you have the US cracking down on illegal cryptocurrency activities. Um, and what they're gonna be doing this year as well is they're gonna be cracking down on uh, taxes. And so that's gonna be a big thing. They are going to be really going after people for taxes as well. So now we, what you have them doing is, as Chris was talking about, is the, the Bitcoin dealer, the local Bitcoin dealer, um, you have people that are shorting large amounts of money and then you have people that have or that are trading and shorting lo large amounts of money on these exchanges in the US. Um, if they do not pay their taxes, um, you know, I believe there's a statement I read about earlier this year that was talking about how this United States said like this was the last year that you could like not pay and not get in trouble. Um, but starting this coming year, you're going to have to pay your cryptocurrency taxes, especially if you have a large sum of money that you have used from the U.S. dollar fiat into cryptocurrencies. Then you are then you're gonna have to pay your taxes, or else they will come after you. And everyone's like, oh yeah, no, they won't. I'll keep doing this and that. And then <laughs> now you're seeing the government come after people and it's like kind of like a wake-up call of people being like oh shoot they actually meant what they said uh for once about cryptocurrency because they've said like a lot of crap about cryptos um but like now they're actually taking action to it so um you know i for one will be paying my crypto taxes this year because uh you know i don't want to get stuck up in any of that especially working for um crypto oh another thing is that they were going after cryptocurrency youtube channels as well um Again, with the whole the whole uh, BCC scandal, what was it called? BitConnect. I know BCC. BitConnect. The whole BitConnect scandal. Um, all those YouTubers involved with that all got gutted by lawsuits from the United States. The, the literally the United States like was coming after a lot of those guys as well. Like um, I don't want to say any names on stream, but a lot of those guys um, are in, are in trouble with the, with the government right now. So. We're seeing them go after cryptocurrency. And, and again, so the, the reason why I pay my crypto taxes is one, because now you have to legally, um, it's legally binding, um, but also because I work for a cryptocurrency company and um, ties with that and everything, it would just be really, really stupid of me not to pay my taxes, right? Bad stuff could come to me, bad stuff could come to HOC, it's just not smart. And if they catch you, they take 100% of all your cryptocurrency earnings. So 
everything that you have in crypto, they have, they can legally take from you now, if they catch you. Are there any exchanges that you can short that are legal in the U.S.? Yeah, so I was looking at, um, what was it called? I want to say it was J JDAX. No. JFAX. Oh, wait, I'm still zoomed in. Sorry. There was one. I, um, Chris, let me... Well, I might be able to pull it up for you right now. Let me, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to try to find it. I was talking to someone about it the other day. Mr. Crypto Highlander. What's going on, dude? Let me, uh, give me one second, guys. I'm going to try to find this real fast. Because Crypto Highlander, I think, was the one, or Rick Lewis, uh, was the one telling me about this exchange. It looked really, really cool. I can hear the music blaring from my headphones right now. I cannot find it. I don't know if Rick Lewis is in here, but this song is really loud. I can hear it literally blaring from my headphones. My head, my headphones are underneath my chair. Also, I keep, uh, also I keep searing in all these crypto groups. Um, I'm in that Bitmex. I'm in, I'm in that Bitmex isn't illegal in the U.S. but simply against uh, Bitmexes terms of service i'm not, not saying this isn't true just saying i continually hear that um also i keep oh i keep hearing all these crypto groups i'm in a bit mix yeah so i'm not i'm not again so um chris if you're looking for a really i i'm not i'm trying to i'm collect myself i'm not a very experienced short trader and so like my knowledge of that isn't too vast um just because of like the lack of experience i have so i don't want to like be telling you wrong things <laughs> hold on i have to turn down my headphones i literally came time straight over you guys are listening to some hype music right now i don't even know what this is um but if you're looking for more uh i guess a, a good person to ask about this we have another person who works for hyped on crypto his name is crown you might be familiar with him um he also has a youtube channel and you can probably find him in the dis in the discord as well um but if you want to ask him about crypto stuff about crypto shorting he is much more knowledgeable like that is his thing he's known for crypto shorting so I think it all is just as my opinion yeah so like my opinion is personally um i wouldn't want to mess with bit i try to make a bitmix and a bitfinex account for shorting personally i want to stay away from it just because of the u.s actually like picking up on everything with it being illegal again with me working for a crypto company i want to stay away from like anything anything that could be considered illegal um just so we don't get in a lawsuit or trouble or anything like that especially with me like doing it on screen um I just want to stay away from it um, right now. Um, hopefully, it becomes legal in the future. I think it will be. But there are legal shorting uh, websites. And I'm trying to find this one for you because it's killing me. But I just can't find the name of it. Let me message Crypto Highlander real fast. Maybe it wasn't him, actually. Actually, it wasn't him. I don't know why. Someone, I don't know. I'll find it. Um, I'll find it for you, Chris. But again, so Crown is another one. You'll see him on our YouTube. He uh, talks about, he does live trading and all of that. And he always works on, I believe it's BitMix. And get out of this. And he and he knows a lot about shorting. I'm trying to find this. Now it's just gonna drive me nuts. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh, dude, this is going to kill me. I'll probably just have to come back to it later. But, whatever. <laughs> That's literally going to drive me nuts, the fact that I can't find that. But, um, to totally answer your your question, Chris, sorry, I've been all over the place. Um, I'm not too experienced in shorting. I personally would stay away from it. There are legal cryptocurrency shorting websites. I'll try to find it and get it over to you. Um, whenever I do, if you're in the Discord, then I'll I'll try to post it in there. But Crown would be a really really good person to, to ask about all that stuff. He I know he currently lives in Finland, so for him it's not a problem. Um, so he uses Bitmix, I'm pretty sure, or Bitfinex uh, for his shorting. But he would be a really good person to ask uh, about like gen general shorting stuff. Whoa, my voice is dead. <clears throat> anyway, back on track here. Let's go ahead and do some technical analysis of cryptocurrencies. <laughs> it has been like the most ADD filled stream uh, that I've done in a while. I've literally been like having to recollect myself. <laughs> Alright, what do we got happening on? Oh my god, Ethereum. Why, baby? Why you do this, baby? Why? That not what we want to see from you. Ethereum to USD maybe. Hopefully that looks like a little bit better. Ethereum? Alright, that looks a lot better. That looks a lot better. That's what I want to see. Mm-mm. Exhibit, are you more of a long-term guy? Um not really. I'm a swing trader. That's my favorite. So my specialties are swing trading. It's my favorite thing, it's what I'm most comfortable with. Um, but I'm trying to get into like a little bit of day trading stuff. I've been, you know, going through a, like a lot of TA, but of course, uh, I wouldn't really say I'm a long-term holder. Of course, I do believe in the long-term. I do not have anything as a long-term hold right now. My entire portfolio I use to trade, um, probably make limited amounts of trades a week because it's a problem if you kill yourself in trading fees. A lot of people over trade. I was talking with a group of guys not too long ago. We were talking about how people kill themselves in trading fees because they, they, they over trade. They make more trades than they need to. And uh, next thing you know, they, they're running their portfolios dry from trading fees. So I make limited trades per week. Yikes, I don't like this. Hmm. Something along these lines. Let's go ahead and get rid of this rising wedge. I mean, hmm. Right, let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. So, what do we see here on Ethereum? Right. I, I know a lot of people hold Ethereum. What you see here is your, of course, great price transaction. You're going all the way from four hundred eighteen dollars to five hundred eighteen, almost a hundred dollar growth. That's around. Uh, what 20 percent 10 to 20 percent 20 percent so again great price action on here 20 percent growth on ethereum uh, it's having retracement right now it looks like it's about to hit the 50 percent retracement level uh just from this um you know in fact it is sure enough let's go ahead and zoom in here so we can get an even better look looking like you're approaching the 50 day ema you broke back down below your 200 so that's not too hot but uh when you're approaching your 50 day ema uh, or yeah, you're 50 a day now. Now that you're below 200, um, you're also approaching this 50% retracement level. If you look over here, we can try, kind of see if there's anything. Um, like you have a little bit of um, a little bit of support. So you have some candle body closings over here, right below your 50 day. Um, you have a little bit over here, right above your EMA, uh, above your 50 day EMA. So what you could do is you could come down. It looks like the support over here is going to end up being enough for. It's going to be enough to stop the, the the price action of Ethereum again hitting that support and then rising back up off the off the the 50% retracement level all, along with your support of candle body closings um, and you're in, and Ethereum's just rebounding at the moment so um, so not too much to say let's I mean again let's look at the MACD you're having higher levels of positive momentum. Um, good stuff to see on your MACD. Of course, you're gonna have pullback. Uh, seeing this hook after a. So let's talk about this. This is actually a really good point. So, on your RSI, if you're looking to sell, right? If you're looking to sell, like strictly off of the RSI indicator, 
when you see this happen, right, you see yourself peak right over here. You fall back down, you're getting a second win, right? You're getting yourself a second win, you're coming back up. And when you see yourself only break like a point higher on your RSI, going from 75 to like 76, maybe 77. Um, when you see that happening, you're seeing, okay, this is clear bearish divergence, right? Because if it's going to break back out, you want it to break higher than only like one or two points on your RSI. If you're seeing only one or two points get added to your RSI, um, you're saying you're what that means is you don't have enough positive momentum to go any higher um, So you're barely breaking it barely breaking it. So it's saying okay your momentum's ending You're barely able to get above this the fact that you're able to get above this is good But you're barely able to you can see that the positive in the the bullish momentum's running dry um, and so as soon as you see this start hooking and going downwards and by hooking that's what i mean like when the rsi over here you see it kind of like curve and start going downwards that's i call that the hook um as soon as you see that start happening it would be a pretty safe area to go ahead and sell your ethereum why because you can see that your that your positive momentum's running dry you see it's hooking it was barely able to break its previous high and now it's going downwards out of you know cons a considerable level of overbought zone you know the highest it's been since may so it would have been a pretty safe area to exit um based off your rsi of course you look over to here and you're seeing clear we to delete all well what did i just do i just deleted my macd indicator <laughs> um boom it's back oh cool it's all clear too so if we look at our macd indicator again we had Here's our hook up here. You're seeing it happen, uh, a pretty decent one now. So you would have realized, oh well, it could have been time to sell. And then you have bearish divergence on your MACD over here, um, showing that you're going to be having some negative action coming in. Not nothing horrible, but you're seeing that sellers are going to come into the market, right? It's not mad amounts. It's not like quadruple bearish divergence. It's just saying, hey, you're making a you're making a high, you're making a lower high. Um, you're seeing momentum go out of the market here. Um, a, another great sign of this is you're seeing yourself have your high up here. You you kind of consolidate. You fall back. You retrace a little bit. Go on a second run. The fact that the second run isn't able to pass the first run, that's saying all right. You can you know that the positive, uh, you know that the positive momentum, the positive divergence, is getting used up. You're getting lower levels of that. Uh, giving you good uh, a good idea of when you should sell so again you're seeing that on your RSI you're seeing that on your MACD um, so if, if anything you know even if you're not looking at your candlesticks over here uh, that's why it's important to use your indicators to know um, when this stuff is I guess happening they're so important I think indicators are so useful they really indicators like the MACD and the RSI and some other ones really revolutionized um, trading for me it made it so much easier yeah I've heard these days of the importance of having a daily goal um yeah so I don't necessarily have a daily goal for me it's more of like a weekly or monthly because I don't again I don't day trade too often I, I do day trade now but like if I don't if I don't make a trade in a day I'm not angry if there's nothing here to make a trade on then I won't if I see something that's worth trading then I'll by all means trade it it's, you know it's what I did over here with BTC talking about um the amount amounts of bullish divergence that btc had from its ascending triangle and um its rsi and its macd and all that so i made a btc trade and placed a hefty buy order and it worked out uh because people can make a lot of money on a day but end up giving it back to the market the next day yeah i mean day trading is like a whole different game from swing trading um, Crown is, I think, like way more of a day trader than I am. Um, Crown is really good at what he does, though. He's again, he's no, another one of the TA guys from for, for HOC. Um, really, really good at day trading, dude. Guy's a, a monster. He shorts a lot. He does day trading a lot. He literally does live trading, and you can watch him do his thing. Um, started out with three hundred fifty dollars, turned it into like over two bitcoins. Like he's crazy. He's crazy talented. Knows what he's doing. Um, monster good day trader monster good shorter so if anything dude i have a lot to learn from him about day trading so Ooh. 
calling it in. All right, what do we got going on over here? Let me reload this real fast. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, guys. Well, I need some more water as I do a lot of talking. Tend to run my throat a little bit dry. That is Ethereum. So something to note here on your RSI, you're starting to see, instead of plummeting, you're starting to see a little bit of curve seeing. Well, what this means is more buyers are coming to the market. It's starting to curve off. It's not just going straight down anymore. Starting to see more, uh, some more buyers come in, starting to get into a more neutral zone for, for your RSI on Ethereum. And uh, here you're having, of course, your obvious um, bearish divergence coming in from your MACD. And that is Ethereum. Skadoosh. Tell you what, let's go back to BTC because a lot of people want to know what's happening with BTC, right? Let's go take a look at our RSI. Our RSI on BTC is hooking. Oh, this is our daily. Let's go to our four hour. Um, I mean, actually, that's really good to know, actually. Let's go back to our daily. So our RSI on our daily is hooking. RSI is, was at 60, was about 66, 67. Um, you see this hooking now. You're going to head back down, have some sort of retracements. But again, this isn't a bad thing necessarily because what we're seeing here is consistently higher lows every time. So if we can keep this up, you, <laughs> if we can keep this up, you could possibly even have an even larger run next time because imagine imagine if something like this happens on on btc where you have yourself like come back down here right you maybe go down here and then you you bottom out it's a higher low and then you shoot back up and then you get into overbought territory on the rsi daily for for bitcoin that would be huge like that would be a, a beautiful run right so that's something that you could see i'm gonna leave this here just so maybe we get like a, a somewhat idea of what could happen not saying it's going to but if you keep this pattern up and say you like bottom out over here you could have like it could not be over but in the same sense you know i am pretty i am pretty bearish right now because of this massive line of resistance you know here's my giant arrow pointing towards it um explaining that you have to break above this this giant resistance line if you even want to bull market it's so huge and, and over here we didn't even touch it yet. We haven't even touched it yet, and we're already seeing pullback. So a little bit nervous over the, about that, but um, we're gonna see. You know, it's definitely. I took my profits already. I took them last night. I took my profits at seven thousand four hundred and twenty-one dollars, I think. So I did not want to get too greedy. I saw, I saw bearish divergence, and I'm still seeing it. Right. Seeing it over here on your daily, um, we can go to our MACD on the daily, and uh, it's looking good. I mean, look at this. Wow. I like it. Oops. I like it a lot. But if you go over here on the four hour, it's a different game. You can get a little bit smaller over time scale. You're seeing now, like right over here, you're seeing lower levels of positive momentum. I don't know why it does that. You're seeing lower levels of positive momentum. Um fade down here so you could be seeing some some bearish divergence but it's really good here because what you have is you're having um, consistent higher highs on on the Bitcoin price scale so that's what we like to see right we like to see I mean look at this consistent higher highs going all the way from going all the way back to uh, when was this To what? July, June 6th. It's all the way back to June 6th. So, cool stuff coming out from BTC. Mm, BTC. Ooh. Excuse me, guys. I am uh, a little bit drowsy. It's been a long day. Alright, what else have we got over here? Oh, this is. Oh, I know what this is. Um, copy image. I'm gonna go ahead and post this in the Discord. 
HOC Discord. Trading. Oh my god, trading chat is popping. Crown's in there. Heck yeah. Boom. That's posted in trading chat. So now everybody in the Discord can see it. Alright guys, we're gonna be we're pretty close to this candle body close on the daily. Or was it the daily or the four hour? Yeah, it was the four hour. So we have six minutes. So we're gonna wait around to this. Um go through some stuff here and uh let me go ahead and delete this actually. Delete this this nasty line that we got. But we have six minutes till the four hour candle body closing. It's gonna be a big one. Um I don't know when the daily closes. When does the daily close? Can we see? I don't know if it'll tell us actually. Hmm. Maybe it just closed. That's so weird. I don't know why it's not telling us when the daily closes, but it'll tell us when the four hour. A little bit odd. But anyway, that's our four hour. We have six minutes left uh, to find out where this candle closes. And uh, again, just looking a little bit bearish. Looks like we're about to retrace a little bit. What do we got happening news wise? Let's go back to some news. When in doubt, look at the fundamentals. What is this? Canada's only activity managed cryptocurrency fund, now 91% in cash. Ooh. Yeah, dude, Canada has that really nice exchange coming out because I was, uh, it was basically, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but it's this exchange that has US, it has fiat pairs to every coin. <laughs> Which is how I feel like most exchanges should be, but Canada's only active managed cryptocurrency fund is currently holding approximately 91% of its assets in cash. Uh, a position it says uh, it has taken on uncertainty about near term trajectory of the market. $2.3 billion in assets were denominated in fiat currency while the remaining 9.1% was in Bitcoin. Wow. My gosh. That's notable considering the Rivermont, uh, the Rivemont has regulatory permission uh, to trade five other cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, Litecoin, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum Classic. Lots of news about Ethereum Classic. Coinbase said that they're even looking into adding Ethereum Classic, which is, in the, again, not confirmed, but they said that they're looking at it. Um, yeah because people can uh make all yeah um lots of i don't know why though. i don't know what's the hype about ethereum classic to be honest i mean i get that it's a good coin but it's like <laughs> it's like taking over all of a sudden oh my god something i want to talk about um charlie oh my god if you guys haven't charlie lee him yeah <laughs> this great background of charlie lee he was uh he was talking earlier i probably i'll probably make a video on this tomorrow but charlie lee was talking about earlier about how he encouraged people to own bitcoin before they own litecoin and he was encouraging people to buy bitcoin rather than to buy litecoin it was a really weird scenario i don't i don't know why he would do that coming from uh, a head developer standpoint of one of the top cryptocurrencies, but yeah, so here it is. It's actually the most recent tweet. He says, uh, There will be, and I understand where he's coming from, but hear me out here, all right? Um, he says, There will be at most 21 million Bitcoins in existence. There isn't even enough BTC to go around for every millionaire to own one. So before you buy another coin, Litecoin included, <laughs> Try to own at least one Bitcoin first. Only once you have one Bitcoin, you can buy. Mr. Texas Sport Fan donated five dollars. Why is BNB skipping this pump? Disappointing. Let's go ahead and take a look. We'll take a look at that. Um, Mr. Texas Sport Fan, thank you so much for the five dollar donation, dude. It means a lot, and uh, we do not take it lightly. Hyped on crypto and myself. Thank you so much for supporting the stream, dude. Supporting myself. I will look at Binance coin, bed and breakfast coin, right after this. Oh, and I'm tall. Oh my god, MP, I'm so sorry, dude. Alright, so we have a couple things to cover. MP, 
if I ever forget your if I ever forget your request, dude, you just keep putting it in chat. Like if I forget, like every five minutes, you just keep putting it in chat, dude. And I will um I'm so sorry, dude. I totally forgot MP. But let's talk about this. So this, then Binance, then Ontology Coin, and we'll probably wrap it up after that. So why would he say it? so at mo he says at most 21 billion our 21 million uh btc coins will be in existence that's not even enough for every millionaire to own one um which is true and he's t what he means by at most is because around four million of those are like lost gone hacked burned they're like they're gone um so what you have here is you have around uh 17 million btc as the new form of circulating supply in theory um, again, it's not an exact number, but just like general perspective, that's what you have. So you have 17 million BTC pretty much. For sure, there's not going to be enough for every millionaire to have one. And so I get why he's saying everyone should own one BTC because th what that works is he's working in, he's working towards the idea of supply and demand. And as, it, as BTC keeps burning and as it grows in popularity, more and more people are going to buy one, which is going to drive price, price action or price evaluation, excuse me. Um, which like makes sense, but in the same time, he's like talking about. I would, I mean, I feel like from a lead developer standpoint, you would want to like push your own coin a little bit and be like, you should own LTC and like a couple LTC first, then Bitcoin. But he's saying like, he essentially called, he essentially called his own coin, uh, you know, a crap coin, which is just interesting from a lead developer's standpoint. Let's go and take a look at BNB, and we're gonna talk about some ontology. MP, I feel so bad, dude. I'm so sorry. BNB, let's do it. <clears throat> BNB to BTC. So what you have here? Oh, that's not good. Um, yeah, it's not good, man. Hmm. I really like Binance Coin. I will say that. If anyone knows me, I'm I'm a big fan of Binance Coin. Um, what you have here is you have like four candle buy touchings, right? You have one, two, three. Four. four main touches uh, for the most part and you have your line of resistance up here that we could adjust a little bit maybe um, but you essentially have your, your your top form over here you have this whole being a second form of touching um, working your way down um, not even nearly touching this third touch over here because of what you're forming against your 50 day EMA being used as resistance but what you have here essentially is a, a nice falling wedge formed on on finance coin and it breaking out bearishly out of it so you broke out essentially broke out didn't have enough volume um still a nice breakout going all the way from 19,000 um up into you know 20,000 to about 20 and a half thousand so a decent trade um if you would have if you would have swing traded that but it, um it is interesting because you have coins that are participating with BTC in this run right you have coins that are following Bitcoin and going up uh, and kind of being tethered to Bitcoin whether it goes up or down and then you have things like Binance coin come in here and not and we, I think we talked about Ven as well was not falling a little bit of a similar situation to Ven here I don't think it's going to be nearly as toxic as Ven was because um, this has a ton more support and it's a lot more of a mainstream coin than Ven is but um, not what you want to see now what you could okay this is actually really bad now so what you have here is you have yourself breaking down bearishly out of this, out of this uh, falling wedge that you have, and then you immediately you're you're literally start seeing this the support line which was previously support all the way down here is now getting used as resistance right away. So I mean we zoom in over here you're seeing the first candle you see a wick touch it candle body close below that wick um, followed by your next one wicking up a second time touching that exact same um uh, falling which was support line now getting used as resistance um uh, oh the candle oh uh, we just got in our new candle our four hour just closed all right we'll look at that afterwards um so you have two i mean you're just respecting the ta here what was support is now getting used as a resistance you've already touched it twice and you're starting to head down so um i don't like seeing that getting used as double resistance uh, a little bit scary but what you could do is you could break back and I've seen things do this before where they like head fake and, um, and then break back into the into the falling wedge and then break out. It's possible. Uh, if we look at our MACD over here, you are fairly oversold. I mean, you're all the way down at, uh, what is that, 23? 
Yeah, so you're all the way down at 23 on your RSI, the lowest level that you've been since early May, since May 5th. Um, but you kind of saw this coming, right? Kind of saw this coming. Lower levels happening on your RSI consistently over here. Um, I mean, you can just kind of see this happening. You kind of just see this whole downtrend. I mean, if you want to draw this like a channel, you can kind of just see this happening over here. Uh, let's move this over like that. You see, yeah, I hopefully you guys can visualize this a little bit. Seeing that you're losing, losing momentum based off of your RSI. I mean, of course, going back to your MACD, we can look at that as well. But um, Michael says, why, why in theory, why in theory, one BTC can't be worth one thousand dollars in valuation? What do you, why in theory, one BTC can't be worth? It, I mean, uh, Mike, I'm a little bit confused about the question. So for BTC, uh, why can't it be $1,000? I mean, it can, it was. Um, are you saying why can't it go back to 1,000? Or maybe I like miss said something. I might have done that as well. I'll have you clarify that, and then I'll come back here uh, to your question, Michael. Just because I'm a little bit confused. So let's go ahead and talk about like right now, right? So we know what's happening with it. Now let's talk about where it's going. So something to note here is you're going to be watching a couple things. I mean, again, again, kind of saw this coming from your from your MACD and your RSI. Kind of saw this coming. Uh, three levels of uh, consistently higher higher lows on your or lower lows on your uh, on your MACD uh, your RSI was showing it as well but now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this hook right right over in here I'm looking for this let me go ahead and even move that out um, I'm looking for this hook on your four hour for BNB once you start seeing this thing curve back over could be a good indicator that you could be heading towards bullish momentum now it's not going to be immediate because personally what I think you're going to do, especially with the candle uh, or with the, you could kind of call that a candle on your MACD of something like this, you could see yourself go back down and then maybe come back up and then go into bullish zone. So you could see like a second mount, a second hill form. But again, you're going to be watching for your hook. You're going to be watching for your hook on your, on your MACD. Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on your RSI. Um, but what I see immediately on your MACD is if we zoom in a little bit, what you want is you want this this candle on your MACD to close um, where it is right now or lower. You know that would be really good because what that would mean is that you'd have three candles closing consecutively lower. Um, you know you have your first one right here, you have your second one, and then you have your third one. <laughs> I love how it just like didn't even. So one, two, three. You're seeing lower levels of negative momentum. Hopefully that sticks. Hopefully you can keep that trend. Um, if it does, you're going to see your RSI st or your MACD start hooking. Um, hopefully you'll start seeing your RSI start hooking down here as well on BNB. Um, seeing it, but nothing too uh, nothing too crazy yet. So that's what I would keep an eye on. Personally, that's that's what I would be looking at here. And so you could have a decent swing trade set up. Um, if we look, another thing I want to do here. I want to make sure I'm giving you like a good analysis of this. Um, is if we want to look at like a retracement level. Hmm. I'll tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna do a retracement level from here. See what we got going on for us. And we're gonna move this guy over just a tad bit. Perfect. All right, so retracements, you're looking like you could, you're in between your 618 and your 786 right now. Something to talk about. Stealth Monkey, what's up, dude? Uh, Michael said, talking about the Charlie demand and supply post. Oh, so um, let me finish BNB real fast and I'll get back to that. And then we have Ontology Coin and then we're going to wrap this up. Um,. All right, sounds good, Mr. Robot. 
boom all right cool so um you don't have too much going on in here ma anyone who shorted that is rolling <laughs> yeah dude um it's true that is true mr stealth monkey welcome back or welcome here so again that's that's really all i would be looking for over here um if you're looking for support you're obviously going to start hitting support over here so let's talk about why you could be bouncing why this could be a good time to buy bnb it's because you definitely have some support over in this area right and if, and if we look you know this is your all you're pretty much touching this level here you're, you're seeing yourselves touch this using it as support bouncing back up whether or not you're going to have enough momentum to swing trade this over here is yet to be determined so what you really want to see is yourselves break back through both of these uh, resistance lines from your falling wedge. You want to see yourself break through both of that um, and test your 50-day EMA and then use this as support. That would be ideal for Binance Coin. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see if that happens again. You're waiting for a hook down here. It looks like it could be coming. Could be coming into play. Um, so keep that in mind and watch for that. Watch your RSI as well. Looks like your RSI is already hooked, uh, and you could be possibly heading back upwards. But again, nothing's confirmed yet. Wait, wait for confirmation. Keep an eye on that. You could have a swing trade on your hands. Um, hopefully, I covered that well, man. Um, if, again, if you have any questions or anything else you want me to cover, by all means, let me know, and I will uh, be more than happy to answer those. Um, ontology to BTC. Let's take a look. Also, along the lines of the Charlie Lee thing, so, um, oh yeah, so we were just talking about this, um, along the lines of this, so what makes the whole supply and demand thing happen, right? So essentially what he's saying is that the price of Bitcoin is going to continually going up because, what is this thing? I look forward in time, I saw blah, blah, blah. And how many of those did Bitcoin die? None. <laughs> what a meme. Um, so how does supply and demand play in factor here? Because essentially what you have is 17 million Bitcoin, right? You have 17 million Bitcoin in circulation that are going to be usable. Um, you have not every millionaire is even going to be able to own one Bitcoin. If every millionaire in the world today decided that they wanted to buy one Bitcoin, they could not do it because it's just there's a lot of millionaires. Not a lot of billionaires, but there's like a lot of millionaires. So with Bitcoins burning and going out with the 4 million that are already gone, um, you have supply and demand kick in, which is going to raise the price evaluation of Bitcoin. So this is why people are saying it could be 25, 50, 100,000, $500,000 in the future, in the very far future, because people are going to want to get their hands on Bitcoin and they're not going to be able to because one, they're continually getting burned, right? And if you own one now, like that's what he's essentially he's saying. You want to own one now before you're not going to be able to in the future. So he's saying you buy one, you long term hold it, and maybe five, ten years down the road, you could have made like 100K or whatever on your Bitcoin investment. That's essentially what he's saying is saying you want this because he thinks that Charlie's on the side of Bitcoin will always be the leader. I don't know if I completely agree with that, but I think it's going to play a huge part in cryptocurrencies no matter what, but I'm not saying it's always going to be the number one coin. He's a very firm believer that it will be. <clears throat> so supply and demand basically saying like since more people are going to want to buy them, let's say all cryptos have a limited supply. Why BTC? So he's saying um, BTC... He's saying BTC because it's the the leader. He thinks it's the giant, the leader. Everything's always going to and always has followed it. So from his standpoint, there will only become less of it. And since there's already a low, a low circulating supply of Bitcoin, um, he thinks with its growth, people are going to like desire it more. He thinks it's going to become more mainstream. People are going to want to buy it more. The price evaluation is going to raise. The burns are going to get played into effect. Um, and then it's gonna keep reducing itself. So he's he's like along the lines of like you want to buy one now before it's gonna cost you too much and you're not gonna be able to later. Um, it's really it's kind of complicated because of the way he worded the whole situation. 
but I hope that made sense. And if it doesn't, dude, I'll try to I'll try to answer that as best as I can. It's a really like it's a really weird situation. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. You're awesome. Yo, thank you. Um, so much, Michael. Glad I could help you. That's what I'm here for. Love your TA, by the way. Dude, thank you so much, dude. That means a lot. I, uh, like, for real, though. Um, stuff like that. Just saying, like, you enjoy the stream means a whole lot more than you might think. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Let's, uh, go ahead and talk about this. So, what do we have over here? Well, we need to find out where our support line is. So, this is Ontology Coin. Ontology to BTC. You have a very, very well line developed for your resistance, right? You have, like, 15 touches. So we know where our resistance is. We know where we need to break out of. Honestly, you're not really anywhere close to it right now, but you could be touching support. Could be. So if we want to draw this like a falling wedge of sorts, we could maybe use that as, as, as a form of a support line. Um, something I would like to use over here. I would like to use this, but that would develop it into a channel. So if we do this, then you definitely have a downwards channel, right? Definitely have a downwards channel. Um, key areas to buy on would be this bottom line of support over here. Maybe this this line of support could be a possible one to buy on as well. You're going to have to play that out. We're going to have to look. I mean, if we go to our... Okay, so this actually isn't looking bad. Let's talk about this. One, two, three... Lower levels of negative momentum on your MACD. So looking better as long as you continually keep this up. You should shoot yourself into overbought zone on your RSI. Haven't done that since the beginning of June. Um, but as long as you keep up this pattern, you could shoot your way towards. Uh, you could shoot yourself towards overbought territory on your RSI just from the looks of this. Now what you need to do is you need to prevent um, this guy from happening, right? You need to prevent this from going lower. So if you bounce to like, it'd be rare. It would be really, really rare. But like, again, you just hit 12 on your RSI. As long as your next major dip in your RSI is above that, um, it's gonna be good, right? As long as your next major dip is above this point, you're you're gonna be in a good zone. Ooh, sorry, I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> I've con I have daily contacts, and so they like freeze up, and it's a disaster. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what is uh, what percentage do you usually gain a day? Um, so some days zero, other days like 10, 20, 30 percent. I don't. Um, so Stealth Monkey, um, I don't day trade every day. Um, I'm a guy that's like very competent in swing trading, um, and so like stuff like this is why I talk about it so much. If I see a trade, then I will enter it. If and if I'm just, I kind of just scan around. Um, if I see something, then I'll by all means enter it. Like this Bitcoin one is one I stressed a lot about because this was one that I definitely thought was worth entering. Um, I pretty much bet my 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 paycheck for this month on this trade. I put my entire paycheck and I was like, all right, well, this was essentially. I looked at this and saw it was like free money. <laughs> um, so I just put my paycheck in shot it up of course it could have been risky i would have had a stop loss of course i would have had a stop loss down here um to, to you know cover my loss but if i see a trade like what was happening on here another good trade i saw was cardano i just traded cardano took all my cardano out put it all in the btc let it ride up sold it at the very top here at around right around this level so right on, almost at the top um and i bought fairly low so i don't gain daily um a better one would be like weekly or monthly the best i've done is i have the best best case scenario for me i have tripled my portfolio in i think a week or two i think it was two i want to say it was like two weeks maybe a week or two weeks i've tripled my portfolio and uh a month or two ago i doubled my portfolio and like a, like less than a week and that was like some of like my really good stuff because like if you get a hundred x or not hundred x two x gains in like a, a week that's really really good um recently i just had like a 
I don't know what it was, I think like 25% in the last three days. So, what is it? What is it? Okay, so in the last four days, I think I've gone up 25%. So, not bad. Anyway, I know I'm really hard to follow because I'm like really tired. Well, Seam Solid Man, have you checked out LTC? No, I haven't. We can do that though. And then I'll probably end the stream after I do some ontology. And some Litecoin. We've done a lot of fundamental stuff on Litecoin, though. I will say that. Anyway, I, I really like Charlie's tweet, though. At first, I was like, that's retarded. And then it, as the more I thought about it, I was like, hmm. So now I have it my goal to own one Bitcoin. I'm not going to I'm, I'm not gonna be like doing what he's saying, though. Of like, I'm not going to make any trades until I own a Bitcoin. Of course, I'm going to trade other things. But I'm going to make it my goal to own a Bitcoin as fast as possible. So let's talk about this a little bit. Ontology, what do we see here? Well, so what I would say is this looks from, it looks like bullish divergence. However, it's not. Here's why. You go down here, you're still getting higher levels of negative momentum. This candle body over here is higher than your previous one. So you're still getting higher levels of negative momentum. It's barely higher, but it is. Um, you're getting higher levels of negative momentum from your from your MACD, um, meaning it's continuing it's continuing to fall. So it's still bearish until you see a reversal. Um, you're not going to want to buy this. You're not seeing a hook at all from either of your oscillators, and you are. I mean, you have plain and clear. I mean, triple bearish divergence. So not anything you want to deal with. Um, not anything you want to buy into right now. You could be a good swing trade as long as you end up hopefully below. Uh, let's just draw a line. Ideally, you want to make sure that you close below or above, excuse me, above this line. You don't want to go over this line and break down here. If you do that, it could be really, really bullish. Um, it would be really, actually, really, really nice. So. So ideally, that's what you want to see. Again, you don't want to break this. Um, if you do, it's not the end of the world, but it's for maximum bullish opportunity. Um, that's what the, that's where you're going to want to sit for your for your MACD. RSI. Looks like it could be hooking. Uh, no, it's not. It's too soon. So you have no confirmation here. No confirmation. And... Uh, yeah, I think that's what you're going to see here. Um, I think you very well could see some support from the support line that we've shown over here. Again, you can't say it's a support line yet. You don't have enough touches, really, to call it a, a line of support, but it's a potential line of support. So something to keep in mind, but not you know rely your whole portfolio off of. So just kind of keep that in mind. You could see support down there, but your MACD and your RSI are going to be key here. They, I mean, they're crucial. <clears throat> but that is ontology coin. Right, we can. Let's also draw up a retracement level here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna draw up two retracements. What do we got over here? Jeez, almost one hundred percent retracement. All right, so if we do that, so I guess I'm messing around a little bit with this thing. I also would want to pull this guy down here and see where we're sitting at, right below our 618. So if we draw this all the way back to like a, the very, very beginning, you would be, you'd still be below your 618. What if we draw this to swing high? All right, nothing too special. Let's go ahead and move on to Litecoin. Probably gonna wrap this up afterwards. Cause my contacts are freezing over. I'm sure you guys can tell I'm getting a little bit drowsy. <laughs> I gotta wake up tomorrow, dude. I gotta wake up early, go work for, I work at a bank. I think I told you guys earlier in the stream, but I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> All right, so this actually looks pretty decent. I like this, I like this a lot. Um, we 
We have too many lines here. I need to get rid of this. I don't like it. I'd rather redraw things. Boom. All right, so. Hmm. Jeez. There's no candles anywhere in this area. Let's see what we can do over here. We gotta see what we can draw up. We gotta use our skills, our skittles. It's gonna be a little bit of a different. This is actually might be a challenging chart. I like it. I like a good challenge though. All right. What what do we got over here? Um, from the bitcoins. Good TA indeed. Thanks for the day. Absolutely, Mr. Chandala. Glad you enjoyed it, dude. If you guys did enjoy it, do not forget to like and subscribe. It would mean a lot. If you guys and again, if you guys ever have questions, dude, I'm always in Discord. Even when I'm even when I'm at work, I can answer questions in Discord. So um Yeah, if you guys are ever in the Discord, I'm always in the trading the trading the trading chat room. So you guys are feel free to uh, ask me questions in there. This could be a good one. One, two, three with a wick poking through so that could be a good line of support i'm trying to find like a good one here before we do anything let's go ahead and look at okay wow that's good wow all right so this is a previous one that we drew from the last live stream um this is exactly what we need to respect the freaking ta boom we drew this drew this and we said it was probably going to come back down to this line again right boom one two three hitting that line and you're hooking off of it that is so nice you're freaking hooking off of this as you see right there you're hooking um and you could you're getting consistently lower levels of negative momentum from your rsi could have a nice breakout towards your upwards now towards the upside what you need to do though is you have two forms of resistance kind of you have like one main one you need to break through these resistance levels and need to break out of your ema first things first you gotta break let me zoom in here First things first, you gotta break the 50 day EMA before you do anything. You break the 50 day, you're pretty much gonna break a resistance line and your 50 day at the same time. If you can break and hold that on top of both of those, um, it would be pretty nice for Litecoin because what you'd set yourself up for here. Mm, well, unfortunately, you just reached a lower low. I was, I was really hoping that this would be a little bit above the last one so you could have consecutively uh, higher lows, but. Nothing too dramatic, I guess. Seeing some support from the left a little bit. I mean, if we let's go ahead and look at our MACD. I mean, your RSI is looking really nice. Like, really, really nice. Like, I'm really liking how the RSI looks on Litecoin. Um, I will say... Alright, so we had, you know, clear bearish divergence. Very, very clear bearish divergence over here. Um, respect the TA over on that. You had bearish divergence going from over here. Consecutively, uh, higher lows. You know, we're starting right here. One, two, three. Clearly draw that one as well. Um, but you can't even you can't even draw this line yet because um, you don't know where. You got to watch and see. You got to see where this candle is going to end. You got to see where these candles are going to end. You got to see where this hooks. Um, if this does hook at all, then could get a good indicator of a reversal again not confirmed you want to wait for confirmation as always but it would be nice because what you could have here is you could have like your one two if you count that again these are sometimes actually i'm not going to count that screw that one two and you could have say like somewhere in here a third and that would be really nice so That would be um, ideal for Litecoin to BTC. I get another reason why indicators are really, really nice because if the charts are getting funky like Litecoin, um, then you can always go to your indicators and get a good reading. So you could see, you could be seeing here um, lower levels of consistent, lower levels of negative momentum from your RSI and MACD which could be pretty bullish for Litecoin. So what would be really nice, ideal, okay? In a perfect world here, maybe you fall back down, touch support, and break through these. Ideal, in a perfect world. Again, you're probably gonna see resistance in here. 
So like. Ow. Well. Can we like. Oh, we can't mess with these. It, more realistically of something that you'd see in here. It's probably something along, on the, along, along the lines of this. So you probably go. Hit this. Then break through. Maybe hit and then break through. Maybe something like that, because then you'd have your 50, your 200 day EMA over here, and you probably hit resistance. You might fall back down, or you could break up. But one thing I want to talk about over here too is that you could call this. Let's just like first things first. If you're looking at the big picture here, let's go to. The, it's gonna be way more clear on the one day. This just looks like a head and shoulders to me. Maybe it's better on the four hour. When I was looking at this, it just kind of looked like a head and shoulders to me. So you could have probably told, because you have, let's just say, you have your shoulder, that's such a thin line. You have your shoulder, you have shoulder one, right? Shoulder, head, shoulder. Boom. So you have shoulder, uh, it's such a sloppy dropping. You guys get the picture of what I'm trying to say here though. It's getting late, dropping, I can't even speak anymore. <coughs> oh, bless me. So essentially what I'm trying to say is you have shoulder one, you have head, and then shoulder two over here. And then immediately afterwards, you just so coincidentally start seeing a downwards trend, right? You start seeing negative action coming in on Litecoin. Um, you probably could have told this, um, even if it's a really sloppy head and shoulders, you would have had an idea that you could possibly, you would have needed to know like, hey, this is a sloppy head and shoulders, but it's still a head and shoulders. Bad stuff, not bad stuff, but negative momentum, bearish momentum could be coming towards Litecoin. So you'd want to keep that in mind. You want to say, hey, this is a possibility. You know, we see this over here um, as this head and shoulders ends bearish activity could be coming towards Litecoin. Just like, keep that in the back of your mind. Not saying it's confirmed, not saying it's going to, not saying it's not going to. Just saying like, hey, this is a very good possibility. So keeping that in your mind, of course, you start seeing it happening, saying, okay, maybe I should exit my position. Um, uh, just a thing to think about. Just like going through the, the, the mindset and the of what you should do when you're trading. How often do you broadcast, dude? Um, also, another way to follow you than Twitter. Um, pretty much just... Twitter, dude, YouTube, um, I can, I'll tell you what, uh, I will go ahead and, I don't know if Mission Control's in here, I think that they said that they had to go to bed, or sleep, or whatever, they had things to do, which is totally understandable, um, you know, we all have lives outside of YouTube, right, um, so what I'll do is I'll try to get all of my things, and I will put them in chat for you, give me one second. So here is, so I upload the majority of my content to this channel, but I'm gonna start uploading a, um, different kinds of content to my own personal channel, which is the one I owned before I started working for Hyped on Crypto. So here's the YouTube channel for that. Um, let's make sure that's the right one. Perfect. And then here is my Twitter. That is my Twitter, and then um, if you guys are in the Discord, by the way, I'm always I'm very very active in the Discord as well. So those are the probably, and then of course this channel being subbed to this channel because uh, this is where like a lot of my content goes to. But um, if you guys aren't in the Discord, I can go ahead and get the Discord link as well. Boom. And then here is the Discord link. So if you guys want to join the Discord, um, I'm very, very active in the Hyped on Crypto Discord. Um, again, you guys will see me a lot in the trading section. I can go ahead and pull that up, actually. Um, 
So here we are. This is the hype on crypto discord. You guys will see like all this stuff over here. We have voice chats, which um, no one's in right now. Wait, where are the voice chats? They're gone. I don't know where they went. Well, we have <laughs> we have voice chat rooms. <laughs> I don't know where they went, but I swear they're there. Um, but then again, this is the section which I'm in a lot trading. I posted this thing from earlier in there. Uh, and you guys will see a lot of cool stuff in here. So people just talk about trading all the time. You can learn in there too. It's really cool. Boom. So that's the three ways to follow me. My Twitter, my other YouTube, this YouTube, Discord. And that's pretty much it. Slice Keeper says just subscribe to your YouTube. Yo, thank you so much, dude. It means a lot. Mr. Slice Keeper, welcome, welcome to the family, dude. Welcome to the analyzers. The Ani the I don't I gotta figure out a cool name for that, but we'll figure one out. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and probably wrap this up here in a second. Again, I gotta wake up early. Gotta go work at the bank. Sounds so much fun, am I right? <laughs> but uh it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be good. I'm thinking what I'm gonna do over there is post like coin analysis, like T eight, not like only TA stuff, but like quick little snidbits of TA on like all these other coins so like maybe like, like a four minute analysis of Bitcoin or like a five minute analysis of Bitcoin because over here I do like a lot of fundamentals and news and then on the live streams I do TA and all that but I'm thinking over there I might I might just upload like stuff like that like we used to have a series called lightning analysis so maybe something similar to that but I don't know I gotta figure that out I have no idea what I'm gonna start posting on my channel now um Anyway, yeah, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this live stream. Let's go ahead and take a look here, though. I wanna see where this candle closed. Not bad. Not too bad. Starting to see a little bit of resistance. A little bit of support, excuse me. <laughs> what is, why are all of these Oh, we carried over all of our other things to this RS. All right, I don't know why it would do that. <laughs> carried over our other drawings. Click. So yeah, so I mean, for me, I will say though, if it hooks here, <laughs> if it hooks here, that would be unique because what you'd have, you'd have a lower high significantly in the overbought section for the RSI, right? So if it hooked here, like that would be insane if it hooked here and went higher. Oh my God. I mean, granted the chances of that happening are super, super slim. I'm not buying Bitcoin right now at all. Um, it's too, it's too high. It, the, the price is too high. It needs to reset. It needs to correct itself a little bit, but that would be crazy because you see like a little bit okay and so let me get this straight that is not a hook that is not a hook at all so don't get it faked out because you see it like a little turn um that could change in like a heartbeat um you need to see like a considerable one for a hook that's that's not a hook so personally i think we're going to come back into rsi um somewhere within uh, somewhere within the neutral zone i think for sure that's probably where i'll get my buy order ready but um as of right now again if you guys follow me on twitter if you guys follow me in the discord um especially if you're part of the patreon then you guys will know what's happening with my portfolio because <laughs> i'm pretty transparent about it so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's look at the macd MACD clear, yeah, so clear bearish divergence, consecutive, um, consistent levels of lower momentum. You have a double top right here on your MACD, lower levels of positive momentum, looking like we're ready to see some some stuff towards the downside here. You could have yourself like a little bit of a bounce, um, something that is possible if we want to see some running here. So you could go back up like this, get a higher low, and then go down. So that's a possibility. But what would be phenomenal, let's talk about this. What would be phenomenal here is if it like came down very low levels of positive mo of negative momentum and then shot back up. Because, let's talk about this. Why? Because you already have triple bullish divergence on MACD. 
if that happened and it respected this this triple trend line that we have developing right now right see so one two three very clean touch points if it did that it would be quadruple bullish divergence on macd even stronger than what we had on this run potentially enough to break us out of the bear market so i'm going to be keeping a close eye on the on the market right now because it could be a very healthy time for uh traders Good night, we learned a lot, and we'll be in touch. Thank you so much, Michael, dude. It means a lot. Glad you enjoyed tonight. Leo Gavin said, how long have you been trading? So, um, so I've been, okay, so that's com it's complicated, not really complicated, because it's like a pretty like easy, like simple question, but originally got involved with Bitcoin in 2011. Um, that's when I found out about it, got involved, did a report on it in 2011, did another report on it in 2012. Um, Following that, I wasn't too active in cryptocurrency until like 2017. I really was kind of like in and out, didn't really care too much about it. Came back in 2017, got really into it. Um, and so, yeah. Me and my brother were really trying to get into it on uh, at the beginning of 2017 because Bitcoin was like really cheap then. I want to say it was like 2000, I think. Oh well, no, it wasn't even close. <laughs> um, so it was like less than a, it was around a thousand dollars when he was telling when we were trying to get back into it at the beginning of two thousand seventeen. So, damn, time flies. And then so, um, of course, being really on off, um, when the whole great FOMO started happening up here, you had traders pouring into the market. Um, really caught my eye started a cryptocurrency youtube channel um started being way more active in cryptocurrency the crypto community um and then that's really where like my career started was in here i was like all right well this is a market that could potentially change the world like if it's doing stuff like this like it's on the radar now and that was kind of like my trigger to be like all right this is something i want to be a part of because i believe in it after this happened i was like all right i believe we got a dream and uh Ever since then, dude, I've been working with cryptos, fully believe. I, I think we got some long-term stuff here for sure. And I, I I don't know if you've been around for most of the live stream, Leo, but um, there's a lot of really good stuff happening um, progress-wise. We talked about progress being permanent for the most part and price being temporary. The two Bs, uh, progress and price. Um, so, yeah, anyway. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, Taflon from. What is that from? That's from uh, Periscope. Welcome, dude. Great to have you. Anyway, guys, um, Leon, uh, you know, hopefully answered the question pretty well. Um, but I appreciate all of you guys for being here. If you guys do enjoy this, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Oh, I see a question before I go. It's not up on my screen yet. New question before you go. Hey, dude, no question's a noob question. It's just want to learn more. I don't believe in noob questions. What happens post a cup and handle? Okay, so cup and handles are bullish. Cup and handle is a bullish, um, is a bullish, I don't want to say, like, divergence pattern. Con continuation pattern might be a better word. So a cup and handle is something that looks kind of like this. Going out. So you go up, and you say so this is your cup, and then you form a handle that's a downwards channel. So you have your downwards channel. Well, that's kind of sloppy, but you get the you get the overall picture. Um, and then what happens here is you have your downwards channel out of your handle, and then you break out. So that's what a cup and handle looks like. Um, however, there's a, cup and handles are rare. Um, you need to know that a lot of people call things <clears throat> cup and handles that are not cup and handles, and it screws them over. So something to realize about cup and handles, um, I've done this on and on. I've taught people cup and handles on one and ones because they're crucial because so many people screw themselves by them. Um, that's how they work essentially. That's like the easy version of it. The cleaner the cup and handle looks, the more reliable it is. What I mean by this is you see like cup and handles, right? Where it's like this, and you see like jaggedy edges and junky, and then. 
maybe it's something like this, and people are like, oh, it's a cup and handle. Well, the less clean it looks, the less reliable it is, the less likely that this positive breakout that you want is gonna happen. So keep in mind that, you know, the cleaner it looks, the better it looks, the more it looks like a clean just cup and handle, the more re re reliable the breakout's gonna be. Again, the less, the, re the less reliable, because what happens is you have people stuck in here and it keeps going down, the handle keeps extending and extending and they're like, oh, well, it's just a big handle. And then they're like, I'll just hodl for the breakout. And then, because what this handle is, the, hand the, the handle is a downwards channel. So people just keep hodling in a downwards channel and they're like, all right, well, when's the breakout? And then you have a handle the size of a cup. And then you have people being like, oh, well, breakout is imminent. <laughs> And uh, people just get themselves in a lot of trouble with cup and handles, so um, be careful because they are rare and they can, a lot of people uh, get themselves in trouble with cup and handles, but they are bullish. If it is a true cup and handle, um, it will be a bullish pattern. I agree. Been uh, been in this since 2013. Get started back into it um, in 17. Uh, seen a ton of great positive news. Absolutely, dude. Leon, great to have you, dude. I also have seen uh, 200 to 300 mil uh, OTC orders uh, from a friend that works at the OTC desk. Uh, that the ETF, the recent Congress videos, uh, sentiment momentum is shifting. I completely agree, dude. There has been so much. I've talked about it like a ton on videos and on live streams. The G20, um, you have the G, the entire G20 being bullish. You have the United States, which is now bullish. You have banks, which are now bullish. You have uh, Germany, um, German banks, Turkey, Switzerland, uh, pretty much Europe's bullish, which is insane. The largest ETF in Europe is joining cryptocurrency. Um, Amsterdam, all like so many countries in Europe now are crazy bullish, and like with banks joining that as well like you can't argue that so Whew, sorry i'm getting a little bit delirious i'm worn out it's a reverse head and shoulders pretty much like a little bit different but like pretty much <laughs> um the old double cup and <laughs> yeah the cup and handles <laughs> absolutely mr uh chandala glad i could help you dude Yo, Brendan, would you mind looking at uh, the PDCO stock? I know it's not crypto, um, but if you could, that would be awesome. Absolutely, Zora. So after this, I'm going to for sure close up the stream because I'm really, really tired. PCDO? Let's take a look. Oh, yikes. That's not good. Well, let's look at the RSI. Hmm. Not bad. So, okay, we're going to be looking at a huge time scale here, right? Like, look at um our dates down here. So, this is all the way back September of 2017. Long term. So, this is going to be long term stuff. High, higher high, lower high. Not good. But then you have another higher high, lower highs, higher high again. Then over here you have low. Higher low, lower low. That one I guess came from like a flash crash. Then over here you have higher lows, higher lows consistently. So you're starting to see less less negative momentum. You're starting to see you know positive momentum for sure on on some of these runs. So the RSI of course it just was oversold. So you're starting to see definite levels of negative momentum. Watch for the hook on your RSI. Hmm. I think the big thing that you're going to be waiting for here, the big thing that's going to like make your, I don't want to say make it, before I even t look, look at the candlesticks, um, you're going to, of course, you're going to need to probably, ideally, you'll want to have, you won't want to really get these you really won't want to have your MACD candle break this line um, in a perfect world, but if it does, it's not the end of the world as long as it's, as it's lower than its previous one. Um, if you can do that, it'll be pretty good because you'll have bullish divergence. It'll be something along the lines of this, um, like something like that, ideally. 
um so that's i guess you can like go on trading view yourself and like look at all this but ideally that's the line that you probably want to hold the line would be somewhere around um 0.1219 for your or for your macd um you could see uh bullish divergence <clears throat> there's just chunks missing why <laughs> there's just chunks gone Um, this is gonna be your very fine level of resistance. Boop. Very, very fine level of resistance up here. Um, primary resistance. We're gonna have another line of resistance over here. And then we're gonna have support. Skidoosh. Pretty decent line of support down here. So it looks like an, a broadening, <laughs> a broadening channel. We're gonna have so many lines of support down here. So that's gonna be a hefty drop, right? That's gonna be a really big drop. Heaven forbid, like right? you know, you don't want to touch that, but short term, let's talk about this. Hmm. Chris said, This is my first year in crypto. Can you explain a little about taxes? Do you just uh, export the data? Um, for, okay, so I, I've never paid cryptocurrency taxes. For a while, it was never required, right? So I never paid them. I think I, I've done I've done a report on it. I think it was something like, <laughs> I think it was like less than it was somewhere between like 0.5. And I've done a bit. I'll, I'll, let me go find the video. If you go to my um the crypto analyst channel that I have, I have a video about it on there saying that like only like 1% or like 1 to 3% of people paid taxes on cryptocurrency. Like no one did it. Um, no one, like <laughs> really anyone does it still. Um, because it wasn't enforced. So with it being enforced this year, I've never paid cryptocurrency taxes, so I'm not exactly sure. Again, that's something I'm gonna be figuring out. Um, come probably the, around the time of January is when I'll probably start worrying about it, but um, I'm not exactly sure, Chris, because again, it's never been something that's really been enforced. So now with it being enforced, I'll worry about it towards the towards the new year. But I'm not exactly sure. I've, I was wondering that myself, but I'm not really too worried about it. So um, one thing I want to say over here, Mr. Who, who asked me to look at this? Zorro. So one thing I want to say over here about stocks is stocks are not cryptocurrencies, right? So we know TA about cryptos. We know stocks are not cryptos. So for the most part, the TA that I know is based off cryptocurrency technical analysis. So take what I'm saying about um, about this stock technical analysis take it with a grain of salt because again a lot of the stuff i know are cryptocurrency ta stuffs and they are different because stocks are not cryptos and cryptos aren't stocks so take this with a grain of salt when 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 we are looking at this stuff um but that would just be like my insight based off my knowledge but just take that with a grain of salt you know like you know what i'm saying because i am not a uh a stock dude now, let me do this. So. Yeah. Boom. I love how stocks can just get... <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the... Again, I don't really do stocks. Um, I just took a look at it because you were uh, asking about it, but... I don't really do stocks too much, so I don't know. I don't know why stocks just have gaps in them. I've seen it in multiple stocks as I, as I've looked about, like looked at them. But that's stocks for you. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you guys all for being here. It has been my pleasure to be with you guys. My voice is running a little bit dry, but we've had a great stream. We've looked at a lot of stuff. Um, hopefully, a lot of you guys are gonna be. Uh... <laughs> Uh, hopefully you guys have had a great time. Um, I know we've had a ton of good stuff today. Talked about a ton of good stuff. Um, and 
yeah, so um, I hope you guys did enjoy. Sorry, I'm a little bit delirious. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Usually news or something overnight happens. Uh, higher or lower. Yeah, that's another thing is that they're always, they're, they're not, oh, they're closed during certain hours. That could be why. Or a new deal goes through, yeah. So like, I don't mess with stocks. So generally, I try not to do stock stuff on here. Um, I just figured, why not? But that three hour stream, yeah, it's a three hour stream, dude. I'm gonna be dying in the morning when I wake up. <laughs> oh man. All right, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this video to an end, guys, this live stream to an end video. Man, I'm just so used to videos. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. It has been my pleasure to be with you guys. My name is Brendan, or, um, otherwise known as Brendan TCA, or the crypto analyst from Hyped on Crypto. This has been the Hyped on Crypto live stream. So happy that we got to cover everything from like the news, talking about like exams and colleges and Litecoin and Charlie Lee's news, um, some TA on Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, uh, Ontology, Venn, and just like a lot. Honestly, we've covered so many things. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go and wrap this video up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, shoot me a message on Twitter or in the Hyped on Crypto Discord. Until then, guys, I will catch you guys in the next live stream or video. Stay hyped, everybody.